Uh, mic test. Mic test one, two, three, seven, seven, seven. Streams is starting soon. You like that? Uh, you like my graphics uh, there, Scott by Scott? Uh, mic test. Oh, God. Mic Hold test on. one, two, three, seven. Gotta mute that thing, duh. I especially like how it says "Design by Dave, right? So clearly a professional graphic designer on this stream. Sport Flyer can hear me. Hey, Sport Flyer. Oh, oh somebody uh, oh, somebody just uh, landed here in Telluride. Hey, what's up? Good to see you again, uh, Sport Flyer. All right, we're going to get going pretty soon here, guys. I think I got everything set up. There is the underline gives it away. I, you know, I mean, if you don't underline it, right? I mean, I mean, I didn't exactly go to college for this stuff, but I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, my camera angle is not right. Not right. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's looking good. Uh, Sport Flyer, if you want to join us uh, today, uh, I have a link down below to the Google Drive. You can get the uh, flight plan. And uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, somebody, uh, yeah, just somebody just landed here. And uh, we're, we're flying to Colorado today, guys. That'll be fun. Sky by Sky, you get your VR set up yet? Where's the drive link? It's um um it says download today's flight assets right down below here uh, on the page. It's like one of the first panels on the about uh, the about uh, tab. You know it's a Google Drive thing. You gotta copy it and and click you know and paste it. I uh I haven't um haven't made a proper like click button yet. And so much of this like clicky clicky set this up configure that things you have to do. It's kind of a pain. But it's all good. I'm not complaining because we're having fun flying gliders on the internet, uh, virtual flying, and that's pretty awesome. So, just give a couple of minutes here to get people to join in, and we'll get uh, and we'll get started. I want, I especially want everyone to see this 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 great uh, my uh, my graphic design skills. I want everyone to see this. And appreciate this. Um, I spent a lot of time on this, uh, you know, picking the right colors, getting the fonts right, uh, alignments, you know, um, the clouds especially, you know, drawing the detail in the clouds. That was uh, that took a lot of effort, and the um, the, the mountains, you know. So um, I just want to make sure people can appreciate my my skills as a graphic designer. All right, let's show you guys what we got in plan for today. We're flying gliders again, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Turn that off, here we are. We're sitting on the runway and we are in Telluride, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, Twitch isn't showing me tabs. It should be on the about. Hey, let me uh, let me bring up a browser that I'm not logged into. And uh, Microsoft Edge is my go oh god, hold on, don't don't I don't want to show that guy on the stream. Jesus, I don't give a shit what that guy has to say. Uh, Twitch. TV slash design 
by Dave. Down the stream, Jesus. All right, here we go. Okay, so uh, right down here. Um, yeah, if you're just on the on the page, if you don't see the page, then click the name, or if you click the name, then click about, and then uh, right here, copy this link, which is awkwardly like stretching. What is why? Why is it doing that? I don't know. There we go. Scott by Scott pasted it in the chat. Coming through like a hero. Why didn't I just paste it in the chat? <laughs> I, I guess you can do that too. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. All right. Let's bring up the map, the flight plan. I'll show you today's task. We are in Telluride, Colorado. We're going to fly the Rockies today. The Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Uh, Colorado has some pretty big mountains. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I've, I've spent uh, an embarrassingly small amount of time in those mountains. They are epic. And we are here at Telluride. And uh, if you'll notice... Oops, let me switch my... Switch my altimeter to freedom units. And I do need to dial in the pressure altitude for the day, but we're at 9,000 feet. So, had to reload Twitch to see it. Oh, okay, yep, got it. Uh, yeah, so Telluride is up here in these mountains. So the runway here is at 9,000 feet. So we're already stupid high, and we're gonna get even more uh, stupidly high. And if you're using the weather preset that I have uh, in the in the uh, Google Drive share, uh, the only real change is we're going to do west winds today. I got wind from 271 speed, uh, like seven knots with a 10 knot gust. So a little bit of a little bit of gusty wind. Make sure your speed and gust are from the same direction, and that is the that'll that'll push us in the way we want to go. A couple of kind of crosswind legs. Let's bring that map up again. So we're in Telluride, and we're gonna we're gonna sort of go down to here. I can't remember what the name of this little town is, but we're gonna kind of zigzag a little bit. Zigzagging allows us to you know see the mountains because mountains are awesome. And then we're gonna head up here. This is uh, Gunnison, and then we're gonna fly straight north to Aspen. You gotta check out Aspen. Uh, there's some like good South Park uh, Aspen ski jokes or something that maybe I'll remember we can make I and mean, it's probably a cool looking area right check out these ski uh, slopes and then we're gonna go a long ways across here to Colorado Springs which is a beautiful part of the country I've been there a few times my brother lived there when he was in the army and it's where the Air Force Academy is so we're actually gonna land at the Air Force Academy's uh, runway so that'll be a uh, fun 215 nautical miles see if we can do this in around three three and a half hours so here's the wind. If anybody else is uh, getting in here, I'll uh, I'll give you guys another uh, minute or two. It'll be fun to have someone to fly with. I can hear uh, I can hear a jet here in the in the game. Somebody's somebody somebody else is flying here today, and I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here hogging the runway. Oh, look at, this guy's gonna take off. <laughs> in, the, in the airline. Oh, F-117. No, I think this is the wrong... Uh, this, oh, no. He left. All right. Springs. Huge shout. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Scott by Scott's uh, parents live in, the, uh, live in the springs now, huh? Scott by Scott. So he knows this area that we're going to. He's been there. Look at this runway. It, like like rolls uphill here. That's kind of cool. Tell you, right? Look at these mountains. Pretty freaking huge up here. Colorado Springs. So this should be a fun flight. I'm using the same weather preset as yesterday, which is available in the Google Drive link down below. If you want to download that and join me in the game, you can find me. Xbox Gamer Tag is designed by Dave. And uh, a lot of local players online and uh, zero friends. I have no friends online. So, you know, that's how it goes. I have a giant soda. Don't wait for me. I'll catch up in a minute. All right, Sportflyer. Kind of also 
um, you know, just giving um, a minute or two for other people to uh, other people to join, uh, you know, watch the stream. And oh, that actually reminds me, I keep forgetting to share on Instagram when I start. So let's do that right now. This is a cool, this is a cool shot right here. The glider sitting on the runway. That should get people to click the link, right? All right, hold on one sec here. Let me get this. Uh... Oh, there's that airplane. <laughs> We're going to watch this guy take off. <laughs> He's right there behind. Look at, a little bit of a, a little bit of a contrast there. Big old airplane, airliner, and uh, this little glider here. Welcome to the stream, guys. Appreciate it. We're gonna get started in just one second. Give uh, Sport Flyer a little bit of a chance to get in, and anybody else who wants to join in, down below Google Drive link, copy paste it, and it's also in the chat. Scott by Scott posted it. And uh, you can download the assets there, which is the flight plan and the weather preset. The only thing is with the weather preset, um, I have to change the wind anyways. It seems to not save this, so that's not there. Well, uh, wind, we're going to go west wind from 271 or 270. Oh, date time. Yeah. Um, sorry. This should be... Uh, uh, I didn't even set this right. So let's go June uh, 1st. We'll go June 1st and uh, as close to noon as possible. As close to noon as you can dial that dial that gauge to. We'll get her. Uh, we'll get her. And uh, oh, we got like a couple of jets here, lining up with us. Uh, these guys are gonna take out. Let's see if we can let's see if we can get higher than these jets. Probably not. <laughs> Same weather preset as yesterday. Just make sure you set the wind. We're doing wind from 270 at uh, speed. I've got 5.7 knots in the gust. You can go a little bit higher. Just make sure you get the wind direction and gust going the right way. And uh, tell you ride, that is a hard name to spell. Here's the map again. This is the today's task. We are flying from Telluride. All right, I got that post up there. Wind from 270 and gust. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, let's get that back up there for you. Wind from 270, uh, you know, 271. Let's get, let's set 270. Wind from 270, I got 5.7 on the speed and the gust, I got 8.6. Gust per minute on three, so not super windy. All right, pop that in there. Oh, let's watch this jet take off. Looks like these jets are going. It says F-117, so I'm guessing these guys are flying third-party uh, assets that I don't have installed, so it shows them as an airliner. An F-117 and an F-16. Yep, I don't have those uh, models. All right, get her going, guys. Get her loaded up. I'm going to uh, hit the head real quick, and then we'll take off. Got to start the flight on an empty bladder, you know? Alrighty, here we go. Let's let's get her going here. Hey, uh, hey, Scott, if you're still watching, uh, I need a um, 
I need a piss break asset, you know, like, uh, you know, similar to my, uh, you know, maybe you can whip me up a professional looking graphic like my start screen. You know, I'll, you know, maybe you can just whip that up for me real quick. You know, um, you know, something professional, you know, a nice font like this and, uh, you know, maybe a good graphic of a toilet and some urinating or something like that. And, uh, you know, BRB piss break, uh, something like that. Um, you know, I, 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 I mean, I could do it myself because clearly I'm such an excellent graphic designer. But um, yeah, anyways, um, I use Microsoft Paint. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that application. It is, um, it's really great. You have uh, different colors. All right, okay, that's enough of that joke. All right, you guys get it. That joke played too long. All right, let's go flying. Okay, so we're in Telluride, Colorado, and uh, where's my cursor? There it is. All right, let's get back in the cockpit. And we need to close our canopy. And unpause the sim. Right. Let's um. Let's try. Let's try towing up properly today. Let's try using a winch, towing up properly. All right. We are at nine thousand. Oh, I need to set my altimeter. Pressure is two eight nine three. So we go here, and we dial this guy to two eight nine. One, two, three clicks. There we go. Altitude 8,900 feet. All right. Let's connect up to the winch here. And we'll try to do the... Uh, uh, oh, we'll look at... Oh, winch control. Oh, okay, we can go... I think that means we'll go a higher speed and a higher higher altitude or that's probably like the length of the rope or something i know nothing about winch launching i've never winch launched before so we're gonna try it we're gonna tell you right colorado let's give her a go launch three two one let's see if i can do this it's got so it's got a little target down there and uh here we go you got to keep the airplane in the target so far nice and easy look at this climb climbing out very good ooh, 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 ooh. i'm getting a little off here Whoop, oh, whoop, I broke it. Broke the line. Well, we'll see if this is gonna be enough. Put the gear up. And my Vario's not making noise. You have to turn this thing off and on again. There we go, all right. Ooh, lift right behind me, maybe. Or maybe right here. What happened to my uh, instrument? Why is my... Uh-oh. My computer didn't turn on, guys. Um... Shoot, and of course I'm climbing really good right over the airfield. My computer won't come on. <laughs> I don't know why. Let me turn this, uh, turn the instruments off and on again. If it doesn't work, turn it off and on again, right? Well, my computer's not working. So I'm gonna do what they what you do, and I'm just gonna land, and uh, I will tow back up again. Sport Flyer says his computer is struggling. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is weird. I've never seen it do that before. Uh, so we're gonna go land. I mean, I could just end the flight and and redo it, but. Which I'll do anyways, but I might as well might as well use the opportunity for some landing practice, right? Look at the scenery here in Telluride. This is pretty ridiculous. Got the gear down, I got a full speed brake. Coming in uh, probably pretty high, but that's okay. We can we can slip this, and I think I overshot it on base. Turn steeper on the final, 
And yeah, I'm coming in pretty steep, but that's okay. Let's uh no, I wanna slip it into the into the into the wind. I don't need to slip. All right, that's uh, all right. Well, thanks for coming to the stream, guys. That's today's flight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that didn't work too well. All right, let's uh, let's just uh, let's restart that. I'm not sure why the uh, flight computer didn't come on there. That was weird. Haven't seen that uh, before. And uh, all right, let's see. Uh, ready to fly. And. Uh, I need to, yeah, weather presets there, but I got to redo my date. We're doing June 1st and right around noon. Right around noon, 12 p.m. And make sure my clouds, same weather as yesterday, except for we're going to do west winds because that'll push us in the direction we need to go. And uh, west at 8 Two six nine, close enough. Two six five, no. Two six. Two seven one, close enough. And not May thirty first, June. Now, why does it do that? June first. That one day difference makes a huge, huge difference. All right. Let's try this again. And now it's not coming on at all. What is the... Great. I don't know why... Um... Oh, it was turned off. Why did it... Why was it... Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Let's just go fly. All right. We're at... Uh, I need to set the pressure altitude. It was 28... Uh, 28... Uh, 28.9, one, two, three, 28.93. Okay, and we're just gonna cheat. We're gonna slew to altitude 9,060 feet. So I like to get uh, 2,500 feet to start. Well, let's just do 2,000. So let's go to, oh, it'll be 11,000 feet. Nine, 10, 11, 11,000, right, and we're flying. There, towed up. Ferio's beeping, navigation's on. We are flying. Where is the lift now? Some clouds. In this direction, this would be north. And it feels like some lift maybe right over the airfield here. That would be nice, right away off a toe. Find here some beeping. See if we can circle in that. Welcome to the channel, guys. We're flying gliders today again in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Doing a uh, pretty big cross-country flight, a couple hundred miles in uh, Colorado and the Rockies. We are starting right out here in uh, Telluride. What a beautiful place. Telluride's a pretty legendary place for hang gliding. And I'm going to guess pretty much flying in general. Or just, you know, in general. I mean, look at these mountains. Look at this scenery, the uh, Colorado Rocky Mountains today. Climbing up now, just uh, just got off toe at 11,000 feet and uh, just climbed a couple hundred feet in this turn. I'm gonna get up here and uh, make our way west. Our ultimate destination is Colorado Springs. But we're gonna do some zigzagging across the Rockies. 
Do some sightseeing. I don't know the Rockies really well at all. I've been to Colorado Springs, never been to Telluride. And uh, I know the mountains there, you know, like driving through Colorado, the mountains are quite spectacular. And that is uh, reflected right away as we start out here. Let us know, uh, give, it, give us a shout out in the stream. Let us know where you're watching from, who's watching. It's always fun to hear from, uh, you know, friends and uh, other, other aviation enthusiasts or flight simmers alike. Climbing up now 11,500 feet. Flying the Discus 2C again today. I guess this is kind of pretty much my airplane now. I tell you, right, airport's pretty gnarly. That's probably a. Uh, Probably a pretty intimidating uh, approach and landing in uh, just about any aircraft, especially because it's at altitude, 9,000 feet, and kind of down in this mountain canyon, this valley here, can be, um, probably can be some interesting air, probably some gnarly turbulence. And we got some big mountains here. All right, just passing through 12,000 feet now. Got a big diet soda from Jack in the Box. Had the bacon ultimate cheeseburger. It's kind of my go-to uh, <laughs> indulging meal. No more than once a week. Big bike ride this morning, so let's say uh, reward myself with a ridiculous cheeseburger. It's pretty good, I gotta say. For a fast food burger, that bacon ultimate cheeseburger, jack in the box. Pretty good. And as is this thermal, pretty good. Not super strong, but we're going up here. Climbing up in the Rocky Mountains here in Telluride, Colorado. Hey, what's up, Flying Puck? Glad to uh, see you again. San Bruno. Next to SFO. Don't, uh, don't forget your O2. Yeah, good call. There's my O2. I should probably turn that on since I'm climbing through 12,000 right now. You can hear it kind of go in the background. Yeah, there it is. Oh, and another thing to not forget is to turn on your pedo heater. I think that's really only a problem if you really get up into the clouds, but uh, we'll turn it on anyways. I think... I, I would assume you probably don't want that on all the time normally in real life because it uses battery power in a glider you don't have a motor to produce power for you so you want to probably conserve battery power but we're flying in the sim so we don't need to worry about that kind of stuff twelve thousand nine hundred feet climbing up here in Telluride Colorado what an absolutely epic uh, looking landscape already. Got about a 200 mile task today. We're gonna do some exploring in the, uh, in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Kind of some sightseeing, zigzagging, and end up in a place that I've, that I've been before IRL, so. It'll be neat to see uh, how that's rendered in the sim. As we climb up here, just kind of getting level with these peaks now. Sport Flyer's computer had a meltdown. 
Yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. When your computer has a meltdown, you just put it in timeout. You just give it the old restart, which is like, put it in timeout. All right, you're going on timeout, computer. Yeah, restart it and come on back. Warfly, we're not really getting uh, very far here yet. 13,500 feet. Uh, not the strongest thermal ever, but um, I guess maybe we're kind of coming up under one of these clouds here. Kind of just starting to get level with these, uh, with the rocky uh, peaks right now. I had a couple other guys uh, sharing the runway with me. earlier at the airport down here in Telluride. What an epic, uh, what an epic landscape. There's the airport where we took off from. hard to thermal from the uh, outside camera I think that's but this is kind of more interesting to watch I think and it certainly produces a nicer thumbnail uh, sport flyer wind um, wind speed oh I can just bring it up on the, I can bring it up and show you Wind from 270 271 uh, speed at uh, I've got it at 6.9 now and the gust Oh, I don't have any gusts. We need some gusts. We need a little bit of a little bit of action here. Put the gust at like eight something. And maybe a little more gust per minute. Something like that. Had some pretty uh some pretty textured, interesting air yesterday when we were flying in Utah, so kinda neat to uh make it a little bit more challenging than just having really smooth air. I mean, normally in real life, you'd you kind of you kind of want that nice smooth air, but in the sim, it's kind of interesting to have some bumpy air for more, you know, so you're not just cruising. Altitude fourteen thousand two hundred feet. Do I have my... Oh, you know what? Oh, this thing... Oh, did this do? Oh. Crap. I, gotta, I think I gotta start over, you guys. It didn't load my flight plan. What? Oh, it did, but what the heck? Ah. Is this going to show? Scott says BRB graphic in the Discord. This is our like private Discord. Yeah, sorry, sorry again, Sport Flyer, for the, uh, you know, I, I kicked you from the, the Discord because that, that wasn't, was something that, like, I had set up, or my friend set up, and it kind of, like, didn't, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make a new Discord server. Fluid exchange break. <laughs> no, I wanted you to just literally do something shitty in, in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> I was totally kidding about the graphic, although that's awesome. Um, but I think, uh, uh, I think I need to, I think I need to restart again because it's not showing me the, um, uh, it's not showing me my, my turn points on the screen. 
and my computer doesn't have the, I mean, my nav log has the turn points, but my computer doesn't have it, so I have no idea which direction I'm going, and why it didn't do that. Yeah, the VSR, VFR map should have it on here. Ah, all right, got to restart. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go back to the main menu. I can just slew to the altitude uh, that I was at there. I don't have to restart all that time. This thing is like, I mean, Microsoft Flight Simulator is, is, is incredible. It's really amazing. But uh, it getting things configured and set up, I mean, Sport Flyer, you, you're getting this. It's like, it's super freaking, um, it's super fiddly. There's the flight plan. All right, hit, hit fly. All right, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Let's see if this will, let's see if this is working right. Okay, it's showing me the, yeah, that's what I want to see is that, that thingy there. Having some technical difficulties a little bit, uh, a little bit today. So like, like sometimes it remembers the date. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it, it keeps certain settings and sometimes it just resets settings. It's, it's super, it's super, it's super frustrating that and look, it just changed the date. Do you see? <laughs> no, no. June 1st, wind, west wind. Set the gust also at 270. Gust speed. All right, how about that? Okay, all right. Close that. No, close that. No, somebody just buzzed me. Is this not, why is this not? Master battery on, no. Oh, now the computer is not working again. We're having a little bit of time with this today, guys. I, I apologize. Fiddly, fiddly. Sometimes it works, sometimes you, it, it's the order that you click on things makes a difference. Frustrating. Apologies again, this is, um, yeah, you guys know how it is. Ready to fly. Let's see if we can do it right this time. Weather. 
June 1st. Watch it. We'll see if it changed the date. Yeah. Oh, oh, it changed the date because I'm going like, yeah, backwards. I'm winding the clock back. Yeah. Anyways, you guys get it. All right. Wind from 270. Uh, and the gust direction from 270. All right. That's right. Okay, now I think if I close this. <laughs> okay, I can turn this off. Uh, no, let's turn off the flarm. And in the past, I've just done this. I've just slewed to altitude. Eleven thousand five hundred feet. All right, we're flying. Okay, so now it's like not, it's not beeping. No, now the computer's not working. What is happening? And now I can't turn it on. What is? Guys, I don't know what's wrong here. Uh, I'm having a time today. Maybe I just need to change airplanes. I can't turn this off or on. This is not working. I don't know what the, I don't know what the deal is. This is an exciting stream. Yeah, Scott remembers his first time flying. Yeah, like this. Don't know what they're doing. All right, we're going to change airplanes. I've been meaning to fly the other, uh, the built-in glider here anyways. So we'll change it to the uh, LS-18, LS-818. That's hard to say. I don't have super colorful colors, though. I'll fly the Xbox version. Why not? We'll support, we'll support our console, brothers. All right, let's see if I can load the... It's probably a bug with the frickin'... Um, with the flight plan situation. Sport Flyer, how are you doing? You having the same kind of trouble that I'm having? <laughs> Ready to fly. Okay. Set the weather. For noon, June 1st, set the wind to seven. Gust to seven, to seven zero. Okay. All right, let's aero tow up. We got this thing. We can do aero towing with this glider now. I haven't aero towed in a while. And I uh, haven't flown this airplane in a while. Master battery, avionics, battery selector, pedo heat. We might need that later on. And, oh, can I change to... I don't need to see the yoke. Uh, let's see. Can I change to... Uh, Imperial units. I would prefer to fly Imperial units just because I know that, obviously. I think... Uh, Burial parameters. Nope. Volume. Let's see, let's bring up the VFR map and make sure 
Damn it. Why is my flight plan not showing? Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, at least my flight plan is showing now in the map. I can kind of navigate that way. It's not showing me the turn points, but a... Uh, going to do another research. <laughs> yeah, he's having hardware problems. We're all having problems today, guys. I don't know about you guys. Uh, close. Yeah. Info. Yeah, this should show me, but maybe it doesn't show me until I get in the air. All right, let's just get in the air. We'll arrow tow today. We'll arrow tow behind this guy. So I'm wagging my rudder, and this guy's going to wave me off. I haven't arrow towed in a while. I like the way this video sounds better than the other one. Landing gear coming up, and we are on tow. Altitude 9,000 feet. And the airplane's having a hard time climbing. And he's gonna crash. I'm gonna pull the release cable and then I'm just gonna slew. Uh, maybe he was able to take off. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna cheat it. Yeah, that's like a Cessna 172, which is not a very like realistic tow plane to begin with, and uh, even less realistic, uh, you know, with him being able to climb at this altitude. Hey, Riley, thanks for joining, brother. Well, we've been having some technical difficulties getting off the ground here in, um, in Telluride, Colorado. I'm back to flying the LS-18, uh, LS-8-18. The other airplane was having trouble with the instrument. Well, I've kind of been meaning to go back and fly this airplane again after flying the other one for a while, so okay. All right, we're, we're, on, we're underway now, guys. Hopefully we got it right. This instrument does not show me the um, the task. Doesn't show me the directions. I don't know how to set that up in here, but at least it's given me the HUD display of the um, you know the turn points. And the VFR map is showing me the. Uh, it takes a second to load, but it'll it'll be there. There's the line, the path I need to go. So I'll be able to navigate. Just getting off tow here and tell you ride, trying to get established. Had some technical settings, or technical difficulties, getting settings to work right. Microsoft Flight Simulator is an incredible uh, achievement in uh, visual immersion, but uh, could use some uh, could use some work in the uh, reliability department. And if anybody knows how to change to uh, Imperial units in the LS-18, uh, let me know. Or maybe somebody can Google that for me. Because I would uh, definitely would uh, benefit me to be able to fly in units that I'm more familiar with. All right, we got some strong lift here. But it's small, I gotta try to core this. Get kind of going in and out of it.
this is um yeah this is some tricky lift here it's pretty small and there's some strong some strong sections it's going up but you can see I lose it I'm gonna try and change my turn direction sometimes if you're having trouble sticking with a thermal 360 degrees of the way around the turn then you change your turn direction Kind of help you get linked up with it. There we go, past 12,000 feet. So we are getting up. It's kind of hard to find a consistent lit, uh, climb here. I think maybe I just need to get closer to this big cloud over here on my right, too. We're flying in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado today, you guys. I've never flown here. I've never been here. This is the town of Telluride, which is uh, pretty legendary. And, I mean, you, you can see why. <laughs> Trying to get connected with a good climb to get up to cloud base here, but not really finding it. There's clouds here. There should be lift. But having trouble connecting and really linking up with something. At least early on here. Sounding a bit better. No, man, this is like, this is punchy. This is where flying with VR would be nice because you could really just look around and really evaluate your terrain clearance as you turn towards the hill here. We got wind coming out of the west, so wind should be kind of blowing up this face here and going up into that cloud. So we might actually be getting a little bit of combination of ridge and thermal lift here. Going a little bit closer. Sometimes you can kind of work this sort of combination ridge and thermal lift until you get higher up over the top of the ridge and then you can connect with just the pure thermal lift and that was a strong some strong uh, stuff there oh yeah let me check my terrain clearance as I come around This one has proven to be a uh, a tricky, a punchy thermal. Tricky to work. 12,600 feet though, we are getting up. Check that terrain clearance, make sure we're not gonna collide with the mountain as we come back around. And we need to tighten this circle up. I keep flying out of it here. doing pretty good. 
13,100 feet. Starting to get up here. It's still, um, this is still a, uh, still a tough thermal here. Find the LS8 today instead of the uh, discus. I was having some troubles with the flight computer on that thing not working for some reason. No clue why. We are working a um, a tricky thermal. 13,400 feet, trying to climb out here in Telluride, Colorado. Planning to fly to Colorado Springs today. Have like a little tour of the Rocky Mountains. Which, uh, you know, should be super awesome because these Rocky Mountains are pretty gnarly. I don't know if you knew that or not. But we're kind of getting a view of that right now. Thirteen thousand five hundred feet. So these clouds are quite a bit higher. I should definitely be able to get up here uh, 18,000 feet or so at least. And what I'm working right now is a very tricky thermal. It's here, it's not here. This is one where you really have to adjust your turns quite a bit. And now I'm thinking I need to kind of try a different area. Let's kind of try to get in closer to this cloud here. And we can kind of appreciate these, uh, the mountain scenery here. Well, I uh, kind of struggle with this thing. My flight instrument's set to uh, metric units right now, which is kind of throwing me off. With the air speeds, at least. I'm like, holy crap, I'm going super fast. It's like, oh, no, that's in, you know, meters per second, or kilometers per hour, rather. I don't know how to change it to imperial units on this computer. When we get up here and we start going on glide, then I can I'll have some time to play with the instrument. Maybe somebody out there who's watching can Google it. How to change to Imperial units on the LS8 glider in Microsoft Flight Simulator. 13,600 feet here. Yeah, not connecting with anything with this uh, really consistently here enough to, to get a good 360 degree turns in. He's been streaming for an hour here and still haven't been able to leave the town of Telluride. Had some technical difficulties. That's how it goes. You guys understand. 
And uh, yeah, just having a hard time connecting with a good solid climb here to get started. So this could be a difficult one. So there's really strong lift, but it's small, which makes it difficult to stay in. Yeah, it's like it's not big enough to get a full 360 degree turn. So you're kind of looking for that, that big fat core. As soon as you get this strong lift, boom, you get smacked out of it. We are underneath this cloud. A couple of cloud options here. This is where having multiple gliders in the air can just be such a huge advantage. So if I'm having, if I'm struggling climbing here, and I can see my buddy over there, and he's climbing great, then I would just go over there. But now I gotta just figure it out on my own. And we got a cloud over here with a nice shadow. Let's let's head up over this direction, see if we can connect with something a little bit better. We got west wind, so the wind's coming into us from this direction. So that means it'll kind of roll up this valley here. And uh, should be popping off these thermals up here. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been kind of tricky going so far. I have not climbed very well. I'm up, which is good. And there is lots of lift, lots of clouds, so that's good. Just got to be patient with it and wait to find the uh, find the right climb here. We'll connect with one. Coming up under this cloud here, hoping this guy does it. That previous one back there was just really punchy. wasn't big enough to turn in. I can't really head this direction yet because I'm not high enough really to clear these peaks safely. Check out these lakes up here. That's cool. Trying to connect with this lift here, and uh, yes, it's kind of not happening. I was getting spoiled with all the uh, kind of sure thing climbs I was getting in the uh, all the last uh, flights, and now it's uh, quite a bit harder to get going. Whoa, crazy strong lift, and then bang, smacked right out of it. I could try a little bit further in here. Sometimes this is how it goes in flying uh, gliders, guys. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes it's not a sure thing. You're at the mercy of the elements. A little bit downwind of the airport here. 
because these big clouds should produce some lift. Alright, that was freaking strong there. Sometimes you just you just gotta be super aggressive. So let's try that. Twelve thousand eight hundred feet. Not getting it. Not working. Let's try back under here again. 13,100 feet. I mean, I'm staying up, right? And sometimes you just gotta stay up, sort of wait for the day to turn on, right, as we say. strong lift but it's so small you can't really effectively work it I mean, you take light lift but that's large larger areas and more consistent than you can actually you know work that you can do full turns in you take that any day over this punchy stuff is uh I don't think I want to head back over to this cloud over here. Let's go back across the valley. Down to 127. This has been a this has been a tricky day all around here. I've been having a uh, uh, you know, uh, har uh, hardware difficulties, software difficulties. And now we're having, uh, getting up in thermal difficulties, so... I'm flying over the town of Telluride, Colorado. Got some pretty epic, uh, clouds, some good-looking soaring conditions. But just, uh, having trouble... ...finding a thermal, and, uh, that's consistent enough to climb in. The town of, uh, Telluride down below there. This is a pretty gnarly, uh, area. I've got some strong lift, but it's, but it's very, um, small area. So what we call, like, bullet thermals. That can be very difficult to work. 
let's fly up under these clouds, see if we can't do a little better here. This could be a long flight, the way, uh, the way things are going right now. Or it could be a short flight. We'll see. Alright, come on. We should be able to turn in this. Back to flying the LS8 today. That feels pretty good. Come on, stay with it. Keep going up, Thermal. No, that's not it. Tell you right down below there. What a freaking really cool place! All right, there's this, there's a, there's a, ah, in out of it, in out, in out. This is the uh, cool view. Yeah, thanks, Evil Sands Gaming. Thanks for checking out the stream. Yeah, we're kind of just kind of a. It's a good thing it's a it's a cool view because it's kind of frustrating trying to work the lift here. We're having a we're having a tricky time getting up, getting established on this day. I'm trying to fly about a 200 mile zigzag tag, uh, zigzag task over the Colorado uh, Rocky Mountains, but I can't do that if I don't gain some altitude here. And so I'm getting strong lift, but it's very difficult thermals to work. They're small and they're inconsistent. Could be due to the gusty winds that I set. It's a custom weather preset. I mean, it's okay to have challenging conditions, though. You know, we're not. We're not. Uh, the last few streams and flights I've done have been in uh, really pretty easy conditions. So it's good to have a challenge, and today is proving to be quite challenge, uh, challengeful, <laughs> challenging. 13,500 feet. We are climbing. Trying to find a consistent climb has proven tricky. I'm great, Rally. Thanks for asking. I mean, I'd be better if I could get a thermal that would be consistent and get me up to cloud base here. But uh, uh, you know, uh, we're still we're we're still flying and climbing. At least I was. Yeah, I was at just at fourteen thousand, but then fell out of that thermal again. Out of it, in it, out of it. Boy, I hope that's not the way the thermals are all day today. I hope it's just kind of this area. And once we get high, if we can get high, all right. I'm gonna head. Uh, I'm gonna head over here. Got some dark clouds over here. Hope I can see what we can get here. Getting a little bit closer to these this ridge. Got 
come on. This, this cloud's got a nice defined flat bottom. It's dark. It's pretty thick. It's got to be a good climb underneath here. I hope there's clearance from the terrain that I can work the lift. It is choppy. It gets tricky because I try to work this lift in close to the terrain and I don't want to collide with the terrain. I'm gonna try something. We're gonna enable cheat codes. And uh, I'm wondering if the gust factor is what's messing me up. So I'm gonna lower the gust speed down to uh, just a little bit above the regular speed. Percy's just curious to see if that, if the gust factor has something to do with how broken and choppy these thermals are. Fourteen thousand four hundred feet. I mean, I am climbing. I'm getting up here, but it's just not been consistent. It's been slow going. There we go. This is feeling better. There's 15,000 feet. Yeah, it looks like my overlay is working, which shows the altitude up at the top of the screen there. Hopefully as I get higher, the thermal will smooth out and become more consistent. Gonna need quite a bit more altitude to safely navigate these mountain ranges here in Colorado. The Rockies are uh, pretty big. A couple of guys flying F-18s around here. That's cool. All right, that feels strong. Come on, keep going, keep going. Come on, no, no, losing it, losing it. Come on, get it back, get it back. There it is. No, yes, no, yes. Get back in there. Get back in there. Where is that list? Where is that list? Very tall mountains. Yeah, we're in the Colorado Rockies here, uh, Riley. I'm just now starting to get over the peaks here. 15,500 feet. But it is... Uh, yeah, this is tricky going today. This is not... This is not a sure thing. And these thermals are honestly quite realistic because sometimes thermals are like this. Sometimes they are really consistent and easy and smooth. Other times they're just really nasty like they are here today. We can get really strong bits of climbing and then just crappy, then just sink right out of it. Like here, sink on this side. So I'm just going to try to turn really tightly and get right back into that lifting area. And then try to kind of flatten out the turn. This is the town of uh, Telluride, Colorado, uh, Riley. This is kind of a, a pretty legendary town for 
mountain outdoor activities. Pretty legendary for hang gliding. I imagine they do some sailplane flying here. I, I don't know for sure. Some glider flying. Fifteen thousand five hundred feet. It's my blasting off in the F eighteen there. That's awesome. Fifteen thousand eight hundred feet. I'm tempted to just start gliding towards our first uh, turn point here. At uh, it's only eleven nautical miles. Although the wind is pretty much drifting me in the direction that I need to go. So, well, I'm not climbing very efficiently or effectively. I am climbing and I'm drifting, kind of in the direction I need to go. But I don't have a whole lot of clearance over the tops of these peaks. I'd like to get another at least 500 feet, if not a thousand feet, and the cloud base is another at least thousand feet above me. So uh, there's there's uh, there's more climbing to be done here. But I'm kind of thinking I want to just get this flight underway. Hour and 24 minutes into the stream, and I'm still over the town that we started at. Had some technical difficulties getting going and now we're having trouble getting established in these first thermals this is how it goes though sometimes you get right up other times you struggle with it and today's been a struggle should be able to get up to these clouds here but the lift is kind of choppy and broken up inconsistent I am, I am climbing. I'm at 15,700 feet. You're in lots of beeps. But what I haven't been able to do is connect with a really solid, consistent climb that I can just turn and turn and turn in. That's going up. Looks like maybe a couple of new viewers on the stream. Uh, that's awesome, guys. Let, hit us up in the chat. Let, let us know uh, where you're watching from. Always curious to see where people are tuning in from and if they're if they're just checking out the sim or if they've been flying themselves. You know, what kind of flying are you doing? Are you flying uh, gliders? Are you just checking out glider flying? I think there's a lot of people out there that don't... Um, I know there's a lot of people out there who maybe are, are just sort of casually enjoying Microsoft Flight Simulator or flying in general, but don't know what's possible with the gliders, what kind of flying we can actually do. And that's what I'm trying to show you on this channel, is what kind of epic cross-country flying we can do given the right vehicle and the right weather.
So I'm flying with a custom weather preset that I set up to be pretty good soaring conditions. Gliders are really cool, I agree, Riley. Gliders are made, are designed for very high aerodynamic efficiency, very low drag, very low wing loading. Means they have a very large wing area for their for their weight. Low wing loading means you need less energy from thermal lift to climb. It also means you're more susceptible to turbulence, getting rocked around, bumped around in turbulence. But that's what it that's what you have to take if you want to be able to get uh, pushed up by the wind. You get pushed down by it also. So I'm going to kind of fly under this cloud here on my way to my first turn point. Not getting stinking high. I mean, 16,000 feet is pretty high, right? But not that much higher than these peaks, so... Cool looking lake down there. We're flying in the Colorado uh, Rocky Mountains today. Let's see if we can find some lift underneath this cloud. As we head on over towards our first turn point, where it says custom. Little town down there, but I can't remember the name. But I'm going to fly over there and check it out. As we sort of zigzag our way across the Rocky Mountains here from Telluride, Colorado. Eventually trying to get down uh, to the east to Colorado Springs. It's a very beautiful part of the country. And I wanted to experience the Rocky Mountains in the sim from the glider. Flying the LS8, one of the uh, built-in Asobo studio gliders today. For whatever reason, I was having trouble getting the flight computer to turn on and the uh, Discus 2C that I'm usually flying, so I thought I would... Uh, uh, I've been meaning to... Uh, Try flying the LS8 again, anyways. Another thing I don't know how to do is uh, change this to. Oh, that's probably how I do McCready. Okay. I don't really want that. Why the tool tips make it not very cool. More. More. All these settings are grayed out. Why are they grayed out? Yeah, this thing is hard to use. Trying to change that to Imperial units. Oh, Sport Flyer! <laughs> that was incredibly painful, but I think I'm about ready to launch. Yeah, I, I feel you, dude. I've been having some trouble today, too. And then the, the weather has been um, just kind of one of those days. Like, everything is not working super great. Uh, this, the sim has been giving me some issues, some software issues. And then the lift has been um, well. You know how it is if you're if you're a if you're a glider pilot. The lift has been, you know, kind of the same way. It's kind of been there and not there. I mean, you can just hear the vario now getting crazy beeps and then sink immediately afterwards. So let's 
It's been difficult to find a climb that I can, that's consistent enough to climb in. Yeah, cool, Riley. Yeah, no worries if you have to hop off. Um, yeah, thanks for stopping by again. It's glad to have, uh, you know, regulars uh, coming around and checking out the stream. Yeah, I just headed toward this. Oh, uh, Silverton is the name of this town. Look at this, this little town just sort of tucked in the mountains here. Let's see if we can climb here. They got a nice cloud right up ahead and a nice cloud off on my left. And there's lift, but we aren't. What we aren't finding is lift that's large enough and consistent enough to really get a good climb in. This one's feeling good, but every time I say that, every time I think I, that, it, uh, it it goes away on me. So let's we'll see what we can get. We need to clear our turns. You can see I got a long ways to go there. Actually, that looks weird. 3.58 nautical miles, but it's way over there. That, what is that saying? That doesn't sound right at all. Yeah, I don't know what that overlay is. But here's here's the flight plan. We've got it in the VFR map here. Holy crap, look at all the air traffic at Aspen. That's where we're going we're gonna to head to. So that'll be fun to fly over there and... Check those guys out, fly flying airliners and things, and and then here comes this guy in a glider. <laughs> All right, we're getting up here. This is this is feeling okay. Fifteen thousand six hundred feet. It'll be nice to get to cloud base because we've kind of got a lot of mountains to cross. So the lift hasn't been that great, but it has been a lot of it, which is good. If there's a lot of lift, but you're having trouble, you know, climbing, you know, at least there's a lot of lift, right? And, and that means that, you know, just be patient. And if you can't climb, but you can stay up, you know, you do that. Then you stay up. You kind of maintain. And then, you know, the weather changes as the day goes on. New thermals will form. And if you're patient and you stay up, eventually you'll connect with something. Well, maybe you won't, but <laughs> uh, hopefully you'll connect with something. And this has been the most consistent climb I've had so far today. Altitude 16,100 feet. Flying the LS8 today, the built-in glider from the Sobo that came with the most recent update to the sim. I've been meaning to kind of come back and fly this thing since I've just been flying the Discus 2C lately. So it's cool to uh, check this out again. Sixteen thousand three hundred feet there. Now we're doing a little bit better. Still not the most consistent uh, of climb, but it's uh, it's getting me up. I 
I'm still not getting up to the clouds, man. This is, um... Oh, interesting. Just not... Previous days, I've had no problems just getting right up into the cloud base, so... Uh, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. That's kind of, um... I mean, honestly, it's kind of frustrating, but it's also, like, that's exactly how, how, how soaring flight can be, you know? One day you're a hero, and you just climb everywhere. And the next day... Not. I'm at 16,600 feet. I'm climbing. Look at this teeny little town down here. Tucked in the mountains. There we go. That feels pretty good. That sounds good. Doing pretty good here now. 16,800 feet. Just now, finally starting to get into the clouds. No, oh, and now I'm out of the lift again. That's doing pretty good. About to crack through 17,000. Yeah, baby, 17,000 feet. Now we're doing good. It's hard to thermal from the ex external view. I, I want to give you guys the external view because it looks cool, and I think it makes the uh, the thumbnail on the you know on the browse page in Twitch uh, look more interesting than the cockpit view. But uh, it's hard to thermal from the external view. I, kind of looking at the airspeed indicator and you know listening to the vario, and your bank angle can be a little bit more difficult to judge uh, from the external view. Looks like maybe a couple new people are popping in and watching. Welcome, everybody. We're flying the LS8 glider today in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Going for about a 200-mile cross-country flight. Once I top off in this thermal and go on glide, I will bring up the flight plan, the task, as we call it, the map. Show you where we're headed. We took off in the little town of Telluride and had uh, gosh, a little bit of trouble getting started here. It's been... Um, it's been a little bit frustrating. The lift has been just really just broken up and been hard to connect with a consistent climb. And But now we're just finally getting to cloud base. 17,800 feet. So we'll see if we can milk this and get a little bit higher. If you're just dropping in, throw us, uh, hit us up in the chat. Let me know, um, you know, where you're watching from. Say hi. Glad you're here. Glad to share, uh, these cool sights in the Rocky Mountains with you. From the seat of this nicely rendered sailplane. Maybe a little later on, I'll give you the rant about uh, how I don't like engines again. Maybe later on, we'll talk trash about people flying airliners in the simulator. Maybe later on, if the sim goes, if the if the stream goes really good, you know, if we get a lot of viewers in here and we're having some fun, I might bust out a very special secret. But, I mean, things got to be going pretty crazy for that. So, you know, if the chat's popping off, if the follows are clicking on, if there's a bunch of viewers, then we'll bust out the special, the special secret. But it's not that special yet. 
but at least I'm climbing finally in some consistent lift. Not super strong, but it's consistent. That was a weird sound. I don't know what that was. I don't know if you guys heard something. Like a weird extra ringing. If you're watching and you want to join me flying gliders today, I have the flight plan and a custom weather preset. If you look down on the page in the about section, whatever in the tabs, there's a link to a Google Drive share. You gotta copy and paste it. I don't know why it's it's not HTML H HTMLizing. And you can uh, yeah, so you can go to that Google share and get the get the uh, get the presets, and you can join me in here. That would be cool. Been fun. Had, had some. Been doing some flying with friends. That's which is. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's always more fun when you can when you can fly with people, right? But we're still climbing here, right up uh, underneath this cloud. Eighteen thousand seven hundred. That's a lot of altitude, uh, but uh, we're flying over these rugged uh, rocky mountains. This uh, this uh, very remote and kind of jarring rugged terrain. So I'm keen to maximize my altitude, especially at this point in the flight. I apologize too, because I, I drank a gigantic soda and uh, diet soda. And diet soda makes me piss. It's Leo the Lion is down below. What's up, guy? I'm not sure if that's Sport Flyer or if that's somebody else just joining me. Well, he's down there at 17,600 feet. That's cool. I'm getting some, like, like a ringing, like, notification. I'm not sure what that is. But, uh, in any case, 18,600 feet. There's some more lift. It's Leo the Lion. Sport Flyer, if that's you, um, just, uh, you know, just smash your keyboard in the chat or something. <laughs> I think he had a different screen name yesterday. MXS. I, know, I guess that's the glider. I don't know. And anyways. At any rate. All right. I think we pretty much are topping this lift out here. 18,700 feet. That's stinking high. I'm up here in the clouds. So let's, uh, let's turn towards our next turn point. Fifty-four nautical miles. We'll get the synth wave going. All right. gonna punch through this cloud let's bring the map back up here we'll show you guys what we're doing today if you are uh, kind of just tuning in we took off here at Telluride and we just are now at the second turn point just a little, little quick little jaunt down here and now we're headed uh, by this reservoir this is uh, Gunnison Crested Butte Regional and then we're gonna go north to Aspen Check out Aspen, you know, and then uh, then we're gonna go over to Colorado Springs. 250 nautical miles in the Rockies in Colorado. I'm at 18,000 feet, and I apologize because uh, I drank all this diet soda. You guys understand if you're like me, it means we need to go for a fluid exchange break. So we top that thermal off. I'm gonna pause the flight. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, sorry about that, guys. All right, let's get her going. Let's go on glide here. Oh, this is good going on glide music. So, big dark cloud right here on my right. I could veer towards that, but it's a little bit off my course line. I don't think I need it. We're there by Castle Lakes. I'm not going there. We got some more clouds up ahead, up where we're headed. I have to get like situated again once I get up. It's like a little. Heading 029. Altitude 17,700 feet. Flying in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. That is a cool landscape, no doubt. Leo, it's Leo the Lion here. Looks like he's joining me, and we got uh, somebody else. Looks like they're on the runway down there. He's coming right up on my right wing. Yeah, buddy. What's up, Leo the Lion? It's Leo the Lion. Look at this guy. Oh, come right up underneath me here. Yeah. Way off the heading. It's hard to hold the heading when you're in the external cam uh, view. Oh, oh, I lost him. There he is. Oh, look at that. Come right up behind me. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, uh, now he's above me. I don't like it. That's all right. Oh, man. How awesome is that? All right, let's go. All right, we got 49 nautical miles. I'm pretty sure we can get there on this glide from this altitude, but we're probably going to need to climb. I mean, we're definitely going to need to do some more climbing uh, to get to our goal. But we're rocking along here. So, one of the things that's kind of tricky in the sim here is, is depth perception, right? It's kind of hard to tell if you're looking ahead at these clouds, like which which one of these clouds is, you know, is a thermal that we can work, right? Like, or, or you know, or, or, or how close they are to you. They all kind of just look like flat, right? And so it looks like this guy kind of on the right is uh, it's closest, but then there's some kind of puffy ones here. Check these guys out. I'm thinking, um, yeah, we maybe will go, uh, we'll veer towards those clouds. Because those will be kind of upwind of where we need to go too. We don't want to drift uh, too far downwind of the course line, because then we'll have to penetrate back into the wind to get, to get back to where we need to go. And we're getting some lift here. But I don't know if that's something I want to try to work. I think I just want to kind of want to porpoise fly through that. Just fly a little bit slower. 
I got the Vario turns tones turned off because I don't want to hear the sync alarm, but uh, you can see the uh, variometer there. The needle is kicking up. Yeah, I'm going to head for these clouds here. There's Leo. He looks like he's headed over for these guys. Oh, that's the, um, that ringing I'm hearing is the, uh, I think the collision alarm. Yeah. Yeah, Leo the Lion is setting off my, uh, collision alarm. Nice to join you, Leo Soccer 18 Oh, that must be you. <laughs> cool, dude. Yeah, thanks for dropping in. Yeah. We're flying today. We're going cross country. First time chat from Leo Soccer 18. Thanks, Leo. Hit the follow button too if you would if you're not already following me. We're doing a lot of glider flying on this channel, which uh, hopefully that's obvious to you by now. <laughs> uh, and by a lot, I mean that's basically all I, I'm interested in streaming. So, yeah, if there's some clouds right over here. Let, this, this is, these are kind of right here. Let's 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 gear towards these clouds and turn the Vario sound back on. And. Uh, there he is, Leo's a new follower. Thanks, brother, appreciate that a lot. And yeah, we got some lift here. I don't know if I wanna try circling in that, but it might be a sucker thermal. Let's just get closer to this cloud here and see if we can't, uh, see if we can't uh, get up in there. See if this cloud gives us some lift. I mean, we're at 17,000 feet, crazy high, right? So, don't really need to climb here, but if we can get a little bit of lift along the way. Leo's off to my left wing here. Above me, no. Maybe he's below me. What are your weather settings? I have a, a, a preset, Leo. There's a um, there's a preset in the um, in the Google Drive. It, it, there's a link on the Twitch page, like in the About section here, just below. Yeah, I don't need to turn in that. That was silly. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, there's a there's a link to Google a Google Drive. You can download the preset. I think you might have to exit the sim and um, and get back in. Uh, yeah, exit the sim and copy the file into the right directory and then get back in uh, in order for it to be applicable in the weather menu. I can also just show you. Put the weather over here because I want to fly. I want to keep track of these clouds on the left here. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, date and time. You want to match the date and time, and then uh, you can see here my uh, temperature, pressure, and humidity. Those are three key uh, factors you want to set. And then wind. You want to try to match the wind. So if you use the preset because Microsoft Flight Simulator is still pretty darn buggy, uh, the wind won't be set in there. It seems to either save the wind or like one of the wind settings. So if you use the preset, you'll have to set the wind manually still. So I got the wind from 271, speed at 5.7 knots, with just a little bit faster gust. And then the clouds, cloud settings are here. 6,000 foot, or sorry, 7,000 foot altitude bottom, altitude top 25,000. Scatter 75, density 4, coverage 6. And some lift there, I'm just gonna porpoise fly that. Just pull the stick back, slow down. 
We'll just get some free lift as we are gliding towards this next cloud. And then we'll turn back on the heading to get towards our next turn point. A little bumpy there, a little bumpy. A little bumpy, but all good. I'm gonna close the weather for now. If you need if you need the weather again, let me know in the chat. Just type like wind and I'll show you the wind or whatever. Clouds, I'll show you the clouds. The preset would be the best way to go. I'm planning to eventually have a Discord server set up. I actually did have a Discord server. Well, I, I started to set up that, but it was like a different server that me and some friends were using, so it wasn't really kind of appropriate for this. So I'll probably set up a, de uh, a dedicated Discord server, and then you can just pop in there, and like before the stream starts, I'll post the you know the data in there, right? And then you can just get it. That'll be easier, right? So um, part of me uh, being motivated to do that to set up a Discord server will kind of depend on the following on the channel, right? You know, if there's only a couple of people, it's not really worth it. But um, but uh, it's been steadily growing, like every stream. Um, I've been getting more people coming in, and that's awesome. And, uh, you know, a few people coming back regularly, so uh, that's sort of, uh, you know, that's the whole uh, community building thing, right? So uh, then I think it'll make sense to have a Discord server we can all use to, uh, you know, share files. And I can share the, I can share the, the data files with you uh, for matching the weather. And now we're coming up under these clouds here, altitude 16,700 feet. Let's see if we can do a little bit of climbing here. The terrain is definitely uh, 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 going down as I make progress here. Terrain is receding away, flying away from those tall mountains. But, uh, so we don't need altitude to get to our next turn point, but we're gonna need to climb again uh, to, uh, we will need altitude to get up to the next ones. Planet Neutral, hey now, what's up brother? Thanks for checking out the channel again. Super appreciated the uh, the raid the other day, that was a lot of fun. And uh, I went back and watched your you know, the end of your stream where you were deciding on uh, you know who to pick to raid. And you're like, oh this guy's, this guy's flying gliders, that's cool. And then you're like, you know, let's say hi and see if he responds. And like that was the test, right? Like if uh, so, somebody's streaming and they're just like ignoring people in the chat. It's like, it's like, yeah, why, why bring your followers over there, right? Why, why, why give them the raid, uh, the raid viewers? So I totally get that. I mean, the whole point of the streaming should be that you're engaging with your audience, right? So I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think we get that. Rated some dead ends, learned a lesson. Yeah, I feel you. What kind of uh, what kind of flying are, are you doing uh, um, mostly on your channel there, Planet Neutral? It looks like you guys were doing some. I didn't really uh, I didn't really uh, spend a whole lot of time uh, looking. I, I kind of had to go right to bed after that. That was like past my bedtime that stream. So I. Uh, Looks like I think you were flying the beaver or bush planes or something. I really do like to raid small and find new people and all that. Yeah. All GA. Yeah, cool. Right on, right on, brother. Yeah. Are you uh, a GA pilot IRL or are you just, uh, just a simmer? Tonight we'll be flying the Kit Fox, Kit Fox on the Columbia River. Runs every Sunday night. Oh, cool! What time are you? What time are you starting at um, Planet Neutral? All right, sixteen thousand six hundred feet. Get some lift under this cloud here. Let's see if we can't get up into the into the wispy stuff. Get back up into these into these clouds. <laughs> I 
<laughs> no, I'm a terrible enough pilot in the sim. No need to be responsible for actual crafts or cargo. I feel you. 9 to 9.30 Eastern. So, what is that? That's like 6, 6.30. A couple hours. Cool, man. Yeah, uh, well, depending on how this flight goes, I might be wrapping up around that time. So, I'll, uh... I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop by. Well, you'll be going for a while, so, um... You'll at least be going after I'm done. So, I'll, uh... Yeah, I'll stop by and check it out. I have a lot of, um... Pilot friends in real life, GA pilot friends, hang glider pilot friends, sailplane glider pilot friends. Yeah, usually two and a half to three hours. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, when you raided me the other night, that was a five hour flight. That was a pretty long one. I'm thinking, um, I think like a three hour flight's usually plenty, you know, in real life or in the sim. But, uh, you know, when you can set up epic weather, you know, either either like ridiculously good soaring weather, you know, to be like not quite realistic, but super fun. You could do, you could fly hours. So I'm thinking I need to do like a super marathon flight slash stream one day. And just set up some like epic weather and just see if we can fly literally until sunset. My, own, my voice is only good for four hours. I, I hear you, dude. I get, get that scratchy the dry voice so I gotta be drinking water all the time which means I'm getting up to piss all the time so yeah I'm thinking uh, we need to I need to do a, a, a marathon stream you know do like some crazy long flight like try to fly like a thousand miles or something like that and maybe it takes me all day 10 12 hours but, well, yeah, you only have so many hours of daylight, right? That's the thing with soaring is, is uh, you know, the, the thermal energy comes from the sun. And when the sun goes down, you lose the lift. So, um, uh, yeah, how many hours of daylight? If you take off at noon, you know, typically as the day starts shutting off at like, you know, 5, 6 o'clock, depending on 6 p.m., depending on where you are. So that's only five or six hours. So maybe you can get up at like 11, right? Um, so, yeah, anyways, I'm just thinking out loud here. You know, an, an, an IRL flight that's some crazy number of hours like that is way more difficult than in the sim because in the sim you can just pause it and go piss and get a snack or get some DoorDash, you know? Wow, your friend did, he did the Lindbergh flight. It was a 32 hour stream. Okay, that's extreme. <laughs> I'm not staying up for more than 24 hours for streaming, dude. <laughs> uh, and that's in such like, that's such like a modern day, like, like millennial achievement. It's like, yeah, I, 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 played video games online for 32 hours. Dude, that dude Lindbergh literally flew an airplane for 32 hours, right? <laughs> he just had like, he probably, what, what did he have with him like in that airplane, right? He probably just had like some whiskey and some like, probably didn't even have water, you know? Like, like some dry jerky. <laughs> Cigarettes. How many cigarettes did Charles Lindbergh smoke on his, uh, on his uh, uh, crossing of the Atlantic flight? Someone Google that for me. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> All right, I think we're good on that uh, 16,600 feet, 25 nautical miles to the next turn point. Let me bring up the map here and uh, refresh you guys on where we're going, what we're doing today. So, uh, we are flying from Telluride, Colorado, an epic place for pretty much probably every outdoor activity, really. Beautiful mountain place, skiing, hang gliding, soaring, flying. The runway there, 9,000 feet, pretty crazy. And made a little bit of a jaunt down here, and we're now we're sort of leaving the high mountains, headed towards this, like, lake reservoir, 
uh, to uh, Gunnison Crested Butte Regional. Gunnison Crested Butte. Then we're going to turn north to Aspen and then to the east of Colorado Springs. We'll go land at the uh, Air Force Academy. That'll be kind of fun. Maybe there'll be some people flying fighter jets over there. We see some uh, F-18 F and a Tomcat. Even in sim, flying a plane you can't see out in front for that long is bananas. Yeah, you, who, 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 who builds an airplane without a windshield? I, I still don't understand that. <laughs> You would move back to Colorado in a heartbeat. Where are you living now? Yeah, Colorado is beautiful. I just can't do uh, uh, winters. I grew up in Michigan. So I know what winters are like. And uh, in 1999, moved to California, Southern California. And nope, no winters anymore. I mean, today, what is it, December 4th? We were riding bikes in our shorts. I mean, it was a little bit chilly when we started. You know, I had a light jacket on. Took it off like five minutes later. Indiana. Oh, yeah. So you got winter up there. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I don't mean to brag about the weather, you know, like, right, like. But also, I do mean to brag a lot about the weather. <laughs> Oof, a little, bit of, a little bit of lift, a little bit of turbulence. Now like Vermont, oh yeah, that's some that's some winter up there. A little bumpy. Let's see, what's going on here? Leo the lion, oh he's down to 12,900, not doing too great. Real winters in Vermont. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we had some winters in Michigan, dude, oh yeah. I mean, the only good thing about winter is when you're a child and you wake up in the morning after a snowstorm and you know hear that school's canceled you're like yes but then the power goes out so you can't play video games all day so you might as well be in school nope down here in uh uh, yeah, oh, now we have e-learning, right, yes, yeah, yeah, I grew up at the right time, yeah, I think, I think we're probably about the same age, I'm 30, I'm 38, I'll be 39 in a couple days, and, uh, so, like, we're kind of the last lucky, like, we're, like, the last generation, we grew up, like, before our parents had social media to post all the embarrassing, idiotic shit we did as kids, right, that doesn't exist, there was no digital cameras, like, my mom might have some, you know, some film, photographs of me doing something stupid as a child right but yeah actual school closures are rare 46 yeah yeah so he's just a few years older I mean, we're similar similar generation well, we grew up with black and white television and the rotary dial phone and uh and and that stuff and grew up with the internet becoming a thing so i feel like we're the generation that grew up with technology so we can appreciate we know how to use it we're up with it you know but also at the same time we can appreciate what it was like to have to flip through a paper phone book or you know a catalog a magazine to to look the <laughs> look for the ancient for twitch yeah well i'm just getting on twitch honestly dude like this is this is like my first week of twitching of being a twitcher <laughs> so So not only am I old for Twitch, but I'm late. I'm late getting to the Twitch thing. All right, we're boogieing along here. Just 16 miles to go. 16.8 miles to our, our next turn point, and then we're gonna turn north towards Aspen, and we're gonna have a crosswind bike. So that could be a little bit challenging. It was cool to find you so quickly. It was two months before anyone rated me. Well, well, I, you know, well, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I, uh, yeah, that is cool. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's um, it, it's an interesting thing, you know. I'm 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 learning the I'm learning the Twitch streaming. I tend to be a quick learner. This is not my first time doing 
uh, media production. Uh, I have a pretty good following on my YouTube channel, but I've built communities, you know, uh, done a little bit with like Instagram. And so, I mean, I get, I get how social networking works and, and, you know, whether it's Twitch or YouTube or Instagram, you know, it's, you know, some, a lot of the same rules apply. And, uh, so yeah, we're cruising along here, flying the LS8. After having a slow start in Telluride, with just just really tricky thermals, finally we're able to gradually scratch our way out of that uh, valley, get up over some beautiful peaks, and now we are kind of flying out of the high mountains, and we're just in this like almost looks like desert territory down here. This is sort of a uh, light green, a little dry. Yeah, real dry here, looks like. I definitely don't know uh, Colorado very well. well. I just kind of looked at the map and went, this looks like a cool area to fly. Pretty gnarly, rugged terrain out here, though. Well, it looks like uh, a whole lot of area with not a lot of civilization. I'm looking forward to flying it uh, over Aspen because uh, if you look at the VFR map, let's check. A, let's take a look at the uh, map here. Takes a second, so you can see we're coming up here on uh, this is uh, on, uh, coming up on this airport, and then we're gonna fly north. But oh, hold on, sorry. Yeah, look, there's a bunch of glider or a bunch of gliders. <laughs> I just assume every aircraft is a glider. There's a bunch of airplanes uh, uh, down here, like on the runway to Aspen, so it'll be kind of fun to fly over there and, you know, everyone's flying airliners or whatever. And then here comes this guy cruising in at, you know, 16,000 feet in the glider. Are you running the ski lift mod? No, no. Is that in the, um, uh, in the marketplace? I don't have any graphics mods. The only mod I have is the, uh, is the uh, Discus 2C glider. That's not really a mod, it's just another aircraft. Uh, which I'm not flying today. Flying the, uh, that glider was the uh, flight computer was giving me issues. The flight computer inside the computer was giving me issues. That's, that's, that's where we are, guys. That's, and yes, I tried turning it off and on again. Oh, freeware, flightsim.to. I gotta spend some time uh, browsing flightsim.to. That seems like the place to be for uh, for uh, mods and software and stuff. Yeah, I, um, a buddy of mine uh, and I are, you know, trying to do proper uh, glider tasks. We call them tasks. We don't call them flight plans. And uh, and you can do tasks, and you can do racing in gliders, sailplanes, and, uh, you know, that, uh, the software for that is not built in to, uh, to the flight sim. Hopefully they add it. Um, I think, uh, the gliders would probably have to gain some popularity for the, uh, for a Sobo to, uh, you know, put more development and effort into it, but, uh, glider racing is super awesome. It's really cool what you can do. It's like a, it's like a chess game in the, in the air. Um, I can go into it in more detail, but uh, but in any case, so there's some there's some third-party software that runs outside, and yeah, it's freeware. Yeah, the amount of freeware is remarkable. Yeah, um, so there is a way we can do proper glider racing tasks in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I started playing with that. It's pretty fiddly. There's like, you know, you need this app, you need this app, and you got to connect those together, and you set the one to the local IP address, and you know how that is, right? You just and so it's punchy and tricky to get all everything set up right. Um, it would be much nicer just to have it built into the sim. But um, yeah, so we're hoping to uh, you know kind of do some of that. It would be cool to kind of get a community going of guys, uh, you know, we'll like live stream the the, uh, the races, you know. And I'm getting some lift under this cloud here. Let's turn the volume back on the Vario. Down to 14,900 feet, so let's see if we can climb some more. 
Nice and smooth area of lift here. Not super strong, but it's going up. Let's see if I can get a few hundred feet out of this thing. Oh, and losing it. Well, that was probably a waste of time. I'll get to gliders, maybe with your help. Yeah, happy to help for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to make some, you know, tutorial videos on, you know. I, I did make a tutorial video. Uh, oh, sorry. Got to run and spend some time with the Mrs. for streaming. Yeah, for sure, brother. Um, yeah, I'll try to check you out um, when, uh, when uh, I wrap this up. See what you guys are doing tonight. Um, but, yeah, I do have a tutorial. Uh video that I cut together from one of my live streams on my YouTube channel you can see down below uh, for at least how I set up the weather for epic thermaling conditions so that's a thing but um, yeah just the uh, just sort of the general knowledge of cross-country glider flying and where to where to find lift and strategies and stuff like that is um, is uh, uh, it's a whole nother you know thing to wrap your brain around with flying and that's very cool to me so Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a good night. Yeah, I love playing with the weather. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And what's cool about it, too, what's especially cool about it is it seems that the types of weather conditions that generate generally good soaring days uh, in real life correspond in the game, too, in The Sim 2. Things like the pressure, the temperature, the wind, and, of course, the clouds. So, um, the weather model in the sim seems to pretty accurately represent that at least accurately enough to have an enjoyable fun time flying gliders in the simulator You would really enjoy starflies. Oh, she likes glider and deep dive on weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of guys in the in the gliding soaring community that are like weather gurus. There's a few guys that like totally nerd out on weather, and um, I'm not one of those guys. I'm the guy that's like. Just be friends with the guy that nerds out on weather and then just ask him, like, is this a good flying day? And then say, yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. Or no. And then, you know, just, just let them let them figure it out for me. So, I mean, I know, like, the general basic stuff, right? But, uh, you know, the details of it, yeah. Weather is, yeah, deep dives on weather is, is uh, yeah. And we're getting up into the wispies here. 15,500 feet. Leo the lion looks like he's uh, having a tough time down there. 10,000. Not very high AGL, I think. Uh, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Starflies. I'm assuming she's a Twitch streamer. But they're still lifted. Look at this. It's still going up. Super smooth. This is nice. I yeah, just like these like nice areas of not super strong but smooth lift. And you just can kind of just just kind of chill. A little bit of pressure on the stick. A little bit of rudder. Nice and slow. Just sit back. I'm not sitting too far forward today. There we go. I think I've been too tense. Let me bring this over here. All right, we're good. 15,700 feet, you're crazy high. Alright, 
we can turn that sound off. I don't need a sink tone. I know I'm sinking. I don't have an engine. Of course I'm sinking. Just uh, four and a half miles to our next turn point here. There's a little airstrip. It's a good idea if you're setting up tasks to have your turn points be, you know, places where you could land. Because, you know, if I was kind of going on glide here and, and I was low, you know, it would be nice to be able to land. And, you know, or have a safe place to land. But uh, I don't think we'll need to land there. And look at this big old fat cloud. Look at that. Right where we need to go. We'll fly right under that right under that guy. Should be good. Gunnison. What is it? Gunnison. Let's take a look at the map. I'll show you where we are, where we're going. We are right now approaching Gunnison Crested Butte Regional Airport. Right at the uh, sort of tail end of this uh, long skinny reservoir here. And now, now we're about to turn north and head to Aspen. So, kind of excited to check that out. We are flying in Colorado, guys. Look at this cool river down here. Just sneaking around, just sneaking through there. Got this like extra twisty river. And then we got this river. Look at like two rivers. One river coming from that reservoir, or that lake, and then it splits. One goes down that way, and one goes down that way. All right, turn point number two successful. After a tough start, a really tough start, took like an hour to get up and get established and get out of Telluride. We are doing good now, guys. 15,000 feet headed towards Aspen. And we kind of flew out of the high mountains and you can see now we have to go back into the high mountains. So we're gonna need, to, we're gonna need altitude. 14,900 feet. The peaks here are uh, all around 14,000. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're going to need to be higher than those peaks, obviously, if we want to cross them. So this is where it starts to get, uh, you know, a little bit technical. Also, we have a pretty strong crosswind leg. And I don't know... Yeah, I need to figure out how to set this instrument up in this airplane. My normal airplane is the Discus 2C, and that uh, wasn't working for me today. But that one shows me the wind direction. I'm not seeing wind direction on this, uh, any of these devices. But we should have a pretty strong wind out of the west right now. I set up west, wind early, west winds earlier. All right, let's see if we can climb in this cloud. We're gonna need to get to at least 15,000, you know, maybe 16,000 to have, you know, safe uh, clearance over the top of these peaks as we fly into Aspen. And now we've got a crosswind leg. So the wind's coming from my left, blowing left to right across your screen, coming from the west. So if I fly straight towards my target, my goal at Aspen, 38 nautical miles ahead, and I start thermaling, I'm going to drift downwind, which means I'm going to have to penetrate back into the wind to get to my goal, or to get to my turn point. So it's, uh, in this case, beneficial to stay upwind of the course line, especially if I'm going to do some climbing. So 
from thermaling, which I'm hoping to do as I come under these dark clouds here. And I also want to kind of veer towards the upwind side of the cloud. And we're listening to the vario right now. It's just playing me the sync tone. But we're hoping to start hearing the happy beep soon. <clears throat> no happy beeps. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. There we go. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe we'll get some more. There we go. That's what we like to hear. I'm gonna start with a really shallow bank angle. And then I'm gonna increase the bank angle as the rate of climb increases. That's sounding pretty good. Let's see if we can turn in that. We're down to 14,900. And looks like we should be able to get at least a thousand feet more higher into the uh, base of this cloud. Ooh, that's good. That's what you want to hear. Oh, yeah. Listen to the vario. Oh, it's singing. 800 feet a minute. We should be able to get right up into this dark, clay, dark gray cloud here. Oh, no, there it goes again. There, oh, shut off. Man, it's been punch, it's been punchy thermals today. It's been uh, it's been tough to connect with consistent climbs. Oh, Leo the Lion's still down there. He's still flying. Hopefully he can get up, dude. Whoa, we were going up right there. Oof. Ah. In it, in it and out of it. That's the way it's going to be today. That is the uh, that's the hand we've been dealt. Well, we'll just do the best we can. Fifteen thousand five hundred. Going to go up into this cloud. Looks like. Out of it. Well, let's just turn tight and try to get right back in here as quickly as we can. 15,800. Right, if we can get to, uh, if we can get back up to 17,000, that would be great. But we're gonna disappear into this really dark cloud, which IRL is super dangerous. But we IR sim, <laughs> so we can do whatever we want. A lot of air traffic up ahead at, uh, at um, Aspen, where we're headed, which is cool. It'll be fun to kind of fly in there and, you know, everyone's flying jets or whatever. And then they say, who's this guy coming in here in the glider at 20,000 feet? You know, I don't know if we'll get that high. But it's getting pretty uh, grayed out here. Sixteen thousand one hundred feet. this lift here get as much as we can I really need to be as high as I can get right now because the terrain is rising so I'm gonna be losing altitude I'm going down the terrain's coming up so I need to be as high as I can I don't know if there's gonna be any more climbs on the way but I think we're pretty much maxing this out I'll just kind of Porpoise fly through the rest of it here. Oh, it's nice and uh, it's going up. Well, it'll turn into the cloud. Why not? 
Still going up 16,400 feet. Let's see if we can get another turn here and climb the whole way through. 16,500 feet. Not climbing at all through the rest of that turn, but we're good. 16,500 feet. I was just saying, I really want to be, you know, in the like range of around 16,000 for crossing these peaks up here. So I still got a, uh, still got a ways to go to get there. Thirty-five point nine nautical miles, nine five. But, still climbing as we punch out of this cloud. Let's keep turning. 16.9. This might get me up to 18,000, flying in and out of this cloud here. Seventeen thousand feet. Oh, that's super gnarly, man. Completely great out here. Oh no, here's the edge of the cloud. Still good, lift. 17,200 feet. I'm inclined to get as high as I can in this thermal. Yeah, normally you would not turn into the side of the cloud like this. Because it's incredibly disorienting. It's kind of the opposite of disorienting because it's just like, it's like disorienting applies that you have like an orientation. Like this is like the, this is like the lack of orientation. You can't, you literally can't tell which way is up. But we can tell here because we, we see a sort of artificial horizon with everybody's gamer tags. If I turn that off, then you would get a similar sense of the disorientation that you get in real life. Seventeen thousand seven hundred feet. That is stinking high, guys. I don't know that I have O2 on this airplane. No, doesn't look like I do. Well. It's gonna start to get hypoxic up here. If I started getting really silly and giggly, then well, that's why. Just totally grayed out here. Coming out of the front of this cloud now. Seventeen thousand eight hundred feet. This is stupid high. So let's uh, let's go on glide to Aspen, and we got a lot of traffic there. So it'll be kind of fun to fly in on those guys. Everyone flying the jets. Oh, someone's flying the Spirit of St. Louis. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll go give them. Uh, we'll say what's up to those guys. You guys flying the jets and the fast airplanes, and they'll be like. What's this guy doing in the glider? Where'd he come from? Oh, you know, just a hundred miles away and tell you ride.
We're on glide now to uh, head into Aspen. Let me bring up the map here. I'll remind those who have been sticking around and I'll show those who maybe join in a little bit later of what we're doing today, flying the glider. We're not flying the Discus 2C. This is a screenshot from before. We're flying the LS8. We started down here in the town of Telluride, up in the mountains. The runway there is at 9,000 feet, crazy high. Beautiful, crazy, huge, amazing peaks there. And we got up and uh, struggled to get up, but eventually we were able to get up and cross over and to this little town here, I can't remember the name, but then we flew to the northeast to Gunnison Crested Butte, Butte Regional. And then uh, then now we're now we're on our way north. We're about halfway to Tell or sorry, to Aspen. Let's go check out Aspen. Whenever I think of Aspen, I can't help but think of uh, the episode of South Park, you know, when uh, when the when the when the guys went to uh, when they went to Aspen for the weekend, the timeshare episode. That's my that's my uh, that's my, my association with Aspen. Cool looking puffy cloud on my left there. Altitude is 17,500. And yeah, you can see that up above, my uh, stats on the, on the uh, screen up above here. On a crosswind leg here, I've got wind from the west, 270. So I'm kind of aiming a little bit upwind. I'm heading uh, 352, a little bit upwind of, uh, of my turn point here. So the wind's gonna wind's gonna push me that direction. So I can give you an example of kind of an area I don't really want to go is this cloud over here. Strong crosswind leg. If I went over here and did some thermaling, it's gonna push me well downwind. I make I may gain altitude, but it's also gonna push me, drift me well downwind of my course line which means I'll then have to penetrate back up into the wind. So, you know, if, if it was the equivalent, like if this cloud was over here, then yeah, for sure, I would veer, you know, upwind a little bit and fly under that cloud. If I, if even not to climb in the thermal, but to have like a lifting line, you know, just fly through some lift instead of just still air or sinking air. But it's not, so I'm just going to admire it down there, downwind of where I am. Hello, Cloud. You look very cool rendered in the game like this. Just appreciate the uh, cloud rendering work by the developers at Asobo Studios. Way to go, guys. And a little bit of lift on the upwind side of that cloud there. 27 nautical miles to go at 17,100 feet, so plenty of altitude. And now we're starting to get up into some high terrain here, some neat looking uh, peaks here in the Colorado Rockies, Rocky Mountains. Never been here in real life. I've sort of driven through Colorado north of here, uh, and I've been to, uh, I've been to Colorado Springs, which is what our goal is today. My brother lived there for a little bit drove through to get there. But I've never been to this area. So it's very cool to enjoy the scenery. like these mountains up ahead are like a it's like they've been getting their iron there's like red peaks up here I just love looking at the terrain in the sim there's some areas I want to go fly in the sim uh, there's some flatland soaring like especially Florida has really good soaring conditions in the springtime and so I'd love to do some uh, some sim in there 
But man, it, it's gonna be kind of weird to fly over that flat terrain because you're not gonna have this cool stuff to look at. Look at all these lakes. What's this little town down here? Look at this baseball diamond. Little river. All right, like, look at these peaks. Just epic views. So yeah, we're gonna have to cross. Aspen's like on the other side of this ridge. So we're gonna have to cross some pretty tall peaks. And I'm pretty sure we're all right. 16,600 feet. I'm pretty sure we can get there. Looks like we've got a cloud. We could head for this cloud. You can see the shadow it's casting down there. And uh, so we could fly up into here and if we're not gonna quite make it across, we could maybe get up in the lift there. Or just kind of straight ahead here. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, there's no death perception, so it's kind of hard to tell if this cloud is, you know, here or if it's further back a little bit, and it's like a series of clouds, right? So, but for now, we're just going to continue heading a little bit, uh, heading, uh, putting, setting our heading a bit, uh, a bit upwind of course line. Thanks for uh, spending your Sunday afternoon, evening with me. Uh, for those of you that are watching the stream on Twitch or YouTube, appreciate it. If you're not following me, give me a follow. Help a brother out. If you would, please. The channel is uh, going to be streaming only glider flying here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's a lot of people streaming other things, GA flying, airliner flying, and plenty of guys that know a lot more about than I that a lot more about that than I do. And I don't exactly know about uh, glider flying. I, I don't fly these in real life, but I definitely know about soaring flight. I definitely know about thermaling, flying cross country, and that's what I hope to share with you on this channel to show you the kinds of awesome flights that are possible without a motor if you just know how to find the weather to do it catch you later on the next stream thanks leo thanks for joining in brother appreciate it thanks for following thanks for flying with me i'm imagining you didn't quite get the weather set up right um we'll we'll work on that uh like i said maybe some tutorial videos i did make a uh a tutorial on how to set up your own custom weather for good flying. You can check that out on my YouTube channel. And uh, I need to kind of shut up and see if I can uh, work this lift here as I come up under this cloud. Actually, I don't think I'm going to turn in it. I think I'm just going to fly slow. Yep. Let's just head on. Let's just head straight to. Uh... So now I'm kind of interesting. I could veer to the right. I've got this big cloud, this big dark area here. That could be a good lift producing area. But I, it's going to put me kind of downwind of course line. So I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay towards the left, and I can see. I got a couple of valleys, like uh, like um, yeah, a couple of valleys in this ridge line. So I'm pretty sure I want to stay on the left of this ridge line. I don't want to get I don't want to get too close and down in on the lee side here. Remember, the wind's coming from the uh, left, left to right, west wind. So um, I want to stay kind of right on the upwind side of this ridge, either either above it or on the upwind side of it, above and on the upwind side of it. So if I start to sink, I'll sink down on the upwind side. And I pointed that out there because you can't see it because my nose is in the way. Oof. 
It's a little turbulent there. And we're only 15 nautical miles from Aspen. We're kicking butt today after having a uh, a uh, a tricky time getting up and getting out of Telluride. And what, uh, on all accounts, should have been a, uh, a a kind of a sure thing kind of day, has been uh, has been tricky, has been technical, challenging. And uh, but that's okay. That's cool. You know, that's. Uh, that's how soaring flight is. is. Sometimes it is tricky. Sometimes it's a sure thing. Sometimes you just go up everywhere. Super easy. It's magical. A lot of times it can be frustrating. That first like hour of the flight was was frustrating. But since then, we've been doing great. Fourteen point two nautical miles. So I'm just trying to head sort of upwind, get get uh, penetrate a little bit upwind, to get on the upwind side of this ridge, above and upwind on it, and then we'll just kind of cruise along. We'll, then we'll turn right a little bit and head right towards Aspen. I was up early this morning. Oh. Sorry. USB cord getting snagged a little bit. I need to uh, work on that. A little bit of lift here might be going up to those clouds. Now look at this. Uh, look at this big fatty uh, cloud right here. Yeah, that's what we want. We'll go there. Head right for this one. Woo! That was lumpy. lift right there. I'm just going to slow down, kind of milk it. Climb while I'm still headed towards my turn point. 11.4 miles. 0.3. A couple of guys flying vision jets around here. Those seem to be popular. A couple of guys flying F-18s over here. Looks like probably chasing each other around. Now that would probably be really awesome, flying F-18s like in and around these mountain canyons. It's uh, it's bumpy here. Woo, man, we're getting kind of getting kind of tossed around. Might be some turbulent air coming across this direction, across these jaggedy peaks. Man, some gnarly country up here. Altitude 16,200 feet. Kind of climbing a little bit as we fly along this ridge just below us. Approaching Aspen, Colorado. But about two hours into the flight. I had some tef technical difficulties getting going on the stream today. The sim can be, you know, kind of fiddly to set up. And some things were just not working right. I had to stop and restart a couple times. You guys know how that is. We've got a nice lifting line here as we head towards this cloud. So hopefully we'll get under this cloud and then we'll then we'll uh, 
do some turns and some consistent lift, get back up super high again. Or we might just continue, we might just uh, press on and, yeah, because we're headed that direction. There's plenty of clouds, so I think we're just gonna fly under this cloud, sort of take advantage of whatever lift is here, make that right turn at Aspen and we'll start heading, heading to the east. And then we'll have a straight tailwind on our way to Colorado Springs. Whew, man. A little rowdy today, a little rowdy. All right, as we come under this cloud, now what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna pull back on the stick a little bit. Slow back pressure, slow down. Just fly slow. So if there is lift here, no. Oh, there's some. Coming up on Aspen now. Sixteen thousand two hundred ninety feet. Epic scenery around here. Should come as no surprise. Aspen, Colorado. Not bad. There you can see all the ski runs there. Cut into the mountainside. All right, 15,600 feet as we approach the airport here in Aspen. Gonna fly right over the top of it and tag it. And then we're gonna make a right turn and fly to the east. Colorado Springs is our next turn point, which is our goal. And there we are. Aspen, ladies and gentlemen. That right, is a nice looking place. Come as no surprise. All right. Let's head east. Right turn. In the Colorado Rocky Mountains today. Beautiful flying. And we have 96.92 nautical miles to go. Due east. 
And we've got a nice tailwind push to get us there. And with that, let me update you. Oh, a big dark cloud. I'm just going to keep going straight. We're good. Let me update you on the map. This is what we're doing today. We are doing a uh, task in Colorado in the Rockies. Started down here at Telluride. And then we made a little zig down here and then up to the northeast. And then straight north to Aspen. And now we're going uh, east, a little bit south of east, to Colorado Springs. Got some tall peaks to get over on our way, and then looks like some lower terrain, and then another ridge. So the Rockies are obviously beautiful and interesting, and uh, it's going to make a little bit of a challenging flight because we got to get high to get over some of these ridges, these uh, peaks, these tall mountains. And looks like we've got a pretty good cloud street just north of me. So I'm going to veer left. Like uh, kind of a big blue hole straight in front after this cloud. With some nice big flat bottom ones. So I think I want to go up under here. And I do have to get high. Got some, some, some tall terrain to cross here. I'm at 15,000 feet. And uh, yeah, the peaks around here are going to be in the 14s. So... Uh, I'm going to need altitude to get across those. So I'm going to veer uh, veer north of the course line a little bit because we've got some nice looking clouds here that should produce some thermals that will, or rather there should be some thermals here producing these clouds to be more accurate. But before I get there, I'm going to have to go for another bathroom break, another fluid exchange. So, give me one sec here, guys. I'll be right back. All right, let's fly. Fluid exchange complete. Ooh. Some lumpy air. 14,400 feet, so yeah, definitely gonna need some, uh, it's gonna need some climbing here. Thank you. 
right on cue. There's some lift under this cloud. Seems like some pretty nice lift. See, 14,800 in climbing. Let's see if we can work this and get back up to 16 or 17,000. That would be nice. There's some strong, some strong stuff here. Strong section. Let's see if we can stay in it. Definitely going up. Pretty consistent. As we leave Aspen, headed to the east here. Our goal is Colorado Springs. Got some uh, high elevation we need to cross. So definitely going to need to get up. Which is what I'm doing right now. Right up into cloud base here, 15,500 feet. That was like a thousand feet just like that that we climbed. That's pretty nice. There we are, sixteen thousand feet. Just listen to the sound of the Vario here. Sometimes that's music to your ears, you know. When it's making these sounds. Climbing right up into the base of this cloud. Getting into the wispy here. It's getting a little, uh, starting to lose the visibility. Sixteen thousand six hundred feet. Climbed at least two thousand feet so far in this thermal. This is a nice one. Vario is singing a nice tune now. This is what you love to hear. Just kind of fly in and out of this cloud. Wow, that looks cool, man. That's <laughs> so well done. Pretty sure all that traffic you see ahead there is uh, Denver, which is north. We're not going to be going up. Not going to go all the way up to Denver. Seventeen thousand five hundred feet. Let's see. If we, let's see if we can get into the class alpha airspace. That will be eighteen thousand.
back in the cloud. There it is, 18,000 feet. That is stinking high. Normally you would require clearance from air traffic control to be at this altitude. But we're flying in the sim, so we don't care about that. Flying over the Colorado Rocky Mountains. This is pretty epic, I gotta say. Eighteen thousand two hundred feet. Let's head towards our goal here. Eighty-nine point eight nine nautical miles to Colorado Springs. We're gonna go and land at the Air Force Academy. Figure that's kind of a cool, cool place to land because you know, Air Force Academy. They fly airplanes there, obviously. Stupid high here, 18,000 feet. And look at this this other big old cloud right along right along the course line here. So we'll just fly underneath that cloud for hopefully a lifting line and just kind of kind of slow down. Hopefully gain altitude without really turning, and we can just fly underneath there. A little bit of free altitude as we glide towards our goal. I always need in-flight snacks. Mm. All right, moving right along here, crossing these high mountains, 17,800 feet. Just enjoying the view of these alpine lakes up here. 
Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Flying the LS8 glider. This is pretty fun to fly. I definitely like the control, the uh, computer in the uh, Discus 2C model I've been flying better. I don't really know how to set this one up. And it's got these like little dials to navigate the menus, which are kind of tricky to work with the uh, with the mouse. So, you know. But the airplane flies nice, and of course it glides great. That's the most important thing. And it looks like... Uh, Cruising along pretty good here. Did I just hear some thunder outside? Am I hearing thunder in the sim, or am I hearing thunder in, in real life? I don't know if you guys heard that on the mic or not. What's the weather showing me right now? I, I haven't looked outside in a while. Light rain. I guess there could be some thunder out there. Maybe one of my neighbors just making a making a racket out there. Oh, it's kind of wild. I got the headphones on, so I couldn't really tell, but... Got a big old dark cloud here up ahead of me. This is a big, uh, dense, thick one. These usually are the best indicators of lift in the sim. So I'm gonna fly right towards that guy, see if we can uh, get a little bit of lift out of that on our way or make our glide uh, go a little bit easier. You know, if this was just a straight line, I mean, it's a straight line, but got a couple of uh, mountain ridges to cross uh, to get to goal here at Colorado Springs. So, you know, I'm not 100% positive that, you know, I can get over those ridges at this altitude. So, I'm still kind of keen to gain whatever altitude I can along the way. But I think with the amount of lift available in the sky and the altitude I'm at, uh, I'm also keen to just kind of porpoise fly through the lift instead of instead of stop and, and circle to, uh, to get up. And it's been kind of bumpy right there. The turbulence. It's like a, it's like got a pretty gnarly looking dam down here. Ah, god damn. Is that a dam or is that just like a... What, is this just a beach or is that a dam? I guess it's just a beach. Like a, yeah, okay. Uh, it looks like it was a vertical wall like a dam maybe. Or maybe it's a dam but it's rendered like a beach. Looks like it could be. I mean, it looks, it looks like it could be a dam there, right? Like a reservoir, and it's dammed up. I think there's a city. Yeah, up ahead here, Lake, Lake County, Lake Colorado. Is that a city or is that? I think that's just something that they didn't didn't procedurally generate the buildings there. I got an airport here four miles from me, so if I had to, I could land there if I wasn't going to clear this next this next ridge ahead of me. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to clear that ridge, no problem. If you're just joining me, thanks for checking out the stream. Appreciate it. Hit me up in the chat. Let me know where you're uh, watching from. If you're uh, just kind of generally curious about flying or the sim or if you're interested in glider flying that's what we do on this channel fly gliders I'm pretty stoked that they added gliders in the I should say I'm very stoked that they added gliders in the most recent update to Microsoft Flight Simulator and to go with it 
pretty well represented thermal model. Like this is like this is what soaring flight is like. This is pretty good. And so I've been having a lot of fun uh, sharing this with you guys, bringing you guys along on my flights that I've never been able to do in real life, but know are generally possible. Let's get under this cloud and let's see, we'll watch the Vario. And if it starts to go up, you know, we'll just slow down. I just, sorry if I just bumped the mic there. Altitude 16,800 feet. We are now 72.61 nautical miles from Colorado Springs. From the Air Force Academy, we're going to go land at the Air Force Academy. I think that would be kind of an appropriate place to land. Also want to check out, there's a cool park. I'm not sure if it's like a state park or something uh, called the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs, which is uh, just a beautiful like natural rock formations. Just a beautiful like uh, park area. And uh, there's like a lot of hiking and rock climbing and stuff that goes on in there. And so it'll be uh, neat to check out, see how it looks in the sim. Haven't been there in a long time, but I uh, spent some time there with my brother uh, many years ago. And got a little, look, getting, like, getting a little bit of lift under this cloud. You can see the vario there, the needle, the needle's pointing up. I got the sound turned off because I don't want to hear the sync tone. And uh, so I'm just slowing down. And as I leave it, now we're going down again. So I'll speed up. And then uh, I got another cloud here. So let's, uh, let's change heading for this cloud. Just kind of fly from cloud to cloud. Get a little bit of lift. And get an excellent glide in between. slow down in it. 17,100 feet. 67 nautical miles to go to Colorado Springs. So we come over some more tall peaks here in Colorado in the Rocky Mountains. A lot of very beautiful country out here. Some lift, a little bit of lift as we come up underneath this next cloud. So I'm pull the stick back, bring the airspeed down a bit here, see if we can get some free altitude. Well, not turning. Yep, climbing a little bit. So 
So now the terrain is um, sinking away from me. A little bit lower terrain here as we, uh, lower elevation to the terrain as we uh, fly out along towards our goal to Colorado Springs. Ooh. Strong lift under this cloud. Oh yeah, that was, <laughs> that was nice. Oh man. About two and a half hours into this flight here. Maybe only, maybe only about a half an hour to go. Maybe 45 minutes. Kind of depends. I mean, we're doing good. Still on glide to uh, Colorado Springs. Altitude 17,600 feet. And uh, so now, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just following the cloud streets here. Just going from cloud to cloud. Get a little free altitude underneath each one. Pretty sure we can do the rest of this flight without circling and lift. Just fly, uh, yeah, we'll just kind of change our heading a little bit to get underneath each one of these clouds along the way to Colorado Springs. And in between the clouds, I want to speed up. Fly about 70 knots. And then under the clouds, kind of slow down to whatever is reasonable. I need some up trim. This airplane seems to want a lot of up trim. Oh, you know what I need to do? I, oh, I forgot. I need to, uh, I need to dump the water ballast. Now I have a tailwind, I don't need the water ballast. I like the water ballast dump animation on this airplane, it looks cool. are empty. <clears throat> Close those. Come right up underneath this cloud here now and let's slow her down. Stick back a little bit. Bring the airspeed back. Watch that Vario. Now it's like flat. Boom, now we go from uh, rugged mountain terrain to these flat. Oh, there's the lift. Little town over here on my left. All right, back on course.
Well, we're still on a long glide here, guys. Altitude, altitude is 15,800 feet. Yeah, it looks like my uh, little tracker is still working up there. Might have a couple new people joining the stream. Thanks for checking it out. If uh, you're new here, appreciate that. And uh, we fly gliders on this channel. Glider flying. There it is, the LS-8. Very cool airplane. Let me give you a rundown on what we've been doing today. Here's the task. We started out here in the town of Col uh, Telluride, Colorado. A little zig and then a little zag up to uh, Aspen. And now we're on a long glide out to Colorado Springs to the Air Force Academy's airport. We're going to go land there, check out some of the scenery in the area. And pretty much just a long glide here. Nice and smooth air uh, getting out uh, right now. Which is nice. Had a tough time getting up and getting out of uh, Telluride today. The thermals there were, I mean, there was a lot of lift, but it was punchy, uh, tight, small thermals, stuff that's really hard to work and get uh, consistent altitude gains in. So it's like you gain some, lose some, gain some, lose some, gain some, lose some, which honestly is quite realistic. Like that's how the way, how it can be some days in, uh, you know, IRL. The last few uh, flights I've done in the sim here have been like, like super easy. Uh, the, the at least the thermals have been really easy to work, and so it's 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 kind of neat to have a uh, you know that variety, that sort of realistic variety, and it's that that makes soaring flight interesting. You know, it's never a sure thing. Every day is unique. Every day is different. Here in the sim, we can set the custom weather for, you know, optimal soaring conditions. Uh, but even even with that case, you know, it varies a little bit, uh, you know, depending on the terrain and the day. And so I'm kind of tweaking the, the weather here and there, depending on what we want to do. I could set the weather up for, like, absolutely ridiculous, epic conditions. And, you know... That would be kind of easy. Or you can set it up for uh, pretty challenging conditions. And so the day that I have here set is, uh, well, shouldn't be that challenging of conditions for the, uh, this is kind of like a perfect soaring day for the glider, for a sailplane like this. But, uh, yeah, had a little bit of trouble at first. Uh, got a 43 nautical miles to go. Altitude is 15,100 feet. Getting a great glide flying along here. Air airspeed's about 72 knots. Have about a 10 knot tailwind. So, you know, cruising at 80 knots, making really good progress towards, uh, towards our goal. Thanks for joining me tonight. Been a uh, been a fun flight. Cool, uh, cool scenery here in Colorado. I just love looking at the scenery. It's kind of one of my my favorite things that uh, you can do in the sim. It just looks so great. It looks so cool. Just look around. Colorado Rocky Mountains, of course, are epic. Another big cloud ahead of me. Be able to get a little bit of lift there. I don't think I need to turn in any more lift. I, I, I'm pretty sure I have goal on glide from here, especially at this speed with this tailwind. 
But uh, if there's lift under that cloud, I'll probably what I'll do is I'll just slow down and just pull the stick back, bring the airspeed back. Just get a little bit of free lift on the glide here. I definitely have plenty of clouds to gain altitude if I uh, don't quite have this on glide. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, 43 nautical miles, so I have like 40 miles to go. This airplane gets something like a 40 to 1 glide ratio. And I'm uh, 14,000 feet altitude. The elevation here is probably around 10,000 feet, so I'm close to a mile high. So, yeah, I should have 40 miles on glide. Pretty close to it. Pretty close to it. I'm not quite sure if I'm flying at... In fact, no, I, don't, I definitely don't know if I'm flying at uh, optimal airspeed because I don't know how to set up the flight computer in this airplane. I've been flying the Discus 2C. Um, and that has a different flight computer. And I know how to set the basic things like speed to fly or the uh, McCready setting, which in the shows you speed to fly. And I don't know how to set this one up. It's uh, very unintuitive and kind of tricky to work because you have to like. You have to navigate using these freaking these little, these like dial gauges, and it's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's, uh, not my favorite. Yeah, I, I need to sit down Probably have to read an instruction manual, you know. You know, you guys know how it is. Having a good flight, though. Having a good flight. Just enjoying the, uh... Yeah, like it's just, like, flat... Carre Carrera Air Park. I bet they fly gliders there. There's a big X out there in the field. I'm not sure what that means. Usually X's mean don't land here. Alright, let's see if we get some lift under this cloud. I'm going to turn the barrio sounds back on. I'm well under this base, so I'm inclined to, uh, I'm inclined to circle in this one if, uh, if there's lift here. If not, we'll go to the next one. Just listening for the beeps. There we go. That's what you like to hear. That's good. Alright, let's turn. Start turning. Nope. Right back, right, right out of it. That's not what you want. Come on. <laughs> That's how it's been, man. There we go. Now, if this was competition flying, if this was racing, then your decision to sort of stop here and circle and lift uh, can affect, you know, the outcome of the race. And, you know, I may, I may have enough altitude to get there. And if I did, then I'm really just kind of wasting time thermaling, right? Because you don't, you know, ideally you come into the goal field, like, you know, with just barely enough altitude to get in and land. And in order to be able to do that, you need to have the goal field GPS coordinates and the altitude programmed in your instrument. If you have that, it'll tell you the glide ratio to your goal. 
and so you can kind of watch on the instrument it says glide ratio to goal and you watch that number and when it gets to a ratio that you know you have uh, for the aircraft that you're flying then you can go but I don't have that set up I don't know that we can set that up properly in the sim in the flight computers in the sim yet still kind of learning that stuff but it's not super important for I mean it's not important at all for just flying and having fun in the sim it's important for competition flying for racing and I would like to do that in the sim I think we can uh, well in fact I should rephrase I know we can with some third-party tools there's some third-party tools that we can set up to do proper tasks and cross-country racing they're a little bit fiddly to set up. I've been playing with them. Um, yeah, it, it's just kind of fiddly is the best way to describe it. It's third party tools. But it does work apparently. And uh, so it'll take a, quite a bit more, well, it just takes time to just sit down with it and you know install the apps and set it up right and load into the sim and try it out and then you know, obviously, if you're going to do a whole flight, you need the time to, to do a flight, right? So, most of what I've been doing now is could really be broken down into, like, sightseeing cross-country flights. Just flying to check out the uh, various mountain scenery that the, that the sim renders in such wonderful detail. All right, climbing nice in this thermal here, 15,600 feet. Let's see if we can get to 16,000, and then it uh, should be pretty much a sure thing. Had a fun flight yesterday, flew in Utah. Did a, like a 200-mile like a zigzag uh, task across the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. Some really beautiful terrain up there. Looks pretty similar to the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado. Doing great here. 16,000 feet. All right, could probably milk out a little bit more altitude out of this, but I don't need to. So I'm just gonna go wings level. Set our heading here at 09, 09 or 06, 09 or 07 maybe. And, uh, Let's just head to Colorado Springs, guys. Uh, 36.65 nautical miles to goal. There's a few clouds along the way. We can uh, stop up and uh, top up on the uh, potential energy if necessary. I am thinking it won't be. I had a really awesome flight on uh, Friday. Friday night flew... Uh, in the East Andes in uh, Argentina. East Andes in West Argentina. That was really cool. It got wicked high. It got up to like 20,000 feet. The mountains there are spectacular. The terrain is really interesting. So that was a really fun sightseeing site. It took five hours. Flew 368 miles, I think it was. But it was a lot of fun. And then the channel got raided towards the end, which of course is super fun. Some of you guys might be uh, new followers uh, because of that raid from uh, Planet Neutral. Had to, oh, yeah, it's right there, right? Yeah. Let's see But uh, yeah, now we're on uh, basically final glide here to Colorado Springs. Over this high country in Colorado. A lot of air traffic around uh, Dallas. Not gonna fly to Dallas. I could today. Could, could pretty much go anywhere with, uh, especially downwind with with clouds like this. But um, I don't really want to fly all night. I mean, that would be cool, but uh, I need to get some dinner. 
and, uh, you know, kind of chill. Doing the streamer thing is not exactly all that chill because, you know, I need to be talking to you guys, entertaining you, and you're watching me play a video game. Oh, no, we're, we're flying a flight simulator. We're, we're flying gliders. Got the uh, Xbox livery on the LS8 today. Got to support our console brothers. You know, uh, I, I am definitely a PC Master Race kind of guy, but, uh, you know, can appreciate uh, the consoles. And I think it's super great that uh, the flight sim runs on the Xbox. That really opens it up to a lot more players, a lot more simmers, or maybe get people into flying in the sim that normally would not be exposed to it if they don't have a, you know, a freaking ridiculous gaming PC, you know. Having it be uh, accessible like that is, um, is a real good move. Real good move on the part of Microsoft and the Sobo Studios. So that's why we're flying. Uh, while we're flying here, just enjoying the scenery. Final glide, airspeed 71 knots, altitude 15,700 feet with uh, oh, just under 30 nautical miles to go. Flying out to Colorado Springs. Got some puffy clouds over here. I could kind of, uh, I could kind of veer. In fact, I probably should have uh, set a little bit of a different heading so it would have gone right underneath the center of those clouds, but instead I'll just kind of skid along the edge here. Like a river below me? Oh, yeah. A little river, little, uh, river action there. Had a couple of guys joining me uh, earlier that uh, we're flying together a little bit. That was fun. If you guys are watching, I uh, definitely uh, invite you to join me in on a flight sometime. I'm still kind of working on getting a setup so that I can share the weather preset and uh, flight plan with you so you can just load it up and spawn in where I, am, where I am and have the same weather. When you're flying with a group of gliders, it's, uh, it's really helpful because, especially if you can talk to each other because, you know, you can communicate and say, you know, I've got a really good climb over here, come join me. Uh, or you can just see each other and I can see that guy going up and it's like, I gotta, I gotta get over to him. That's where I wanna be or that guy's going down. Don't go that way. I'll go. I'll go this way. And so um, you can definitely uh, have like a, a you know a teamwork element there. And so yeah, having uh, people join in to fly with would uh, be better for all of us. And if you haven't tried flying gliders in the sim, uh, you I, you know I, I definitely recommend it. There's some really cool flying we can do that um, you, yeah, I mean, you can do it in a powered airplane, of course, but it's really cool to do it, you know, with no motor. Ooh. Excuse me, I was up early this morning, had a long, uh, really hard uh, bike ride, basically a race this morning. So I'm pretty tired. So I'm kind of keen on <laughs> wrapping this flight up. Getting some dinner, chilling out for a little bit. And then, you know, maybe play some video games. <laughs> I 
24 miles to go. Got some more clouds on the way here. I like looking at the gamer tags, you know, seeing what people are flying and I'm getting a little bit of lift here as we approach these clouds. 15,000 feet. A whole lot of wilderness up here in Colorado. some more lift there let's just slow down pull the stick back bring it back to like 60 knots 62 knots a little bit too slow <laughs> yeah I got uh, plenty of altitude no need to uh, circle in the lift just kind of try to grab a little bit of free lift make our way out to Colorado Springs and the Air Force Academy Woo. Woo. Pardon me. Gosh, I am sleepy. Yeah. Let's see if we get some more lift under this cloud here. Yep. Maybe a little bit. Not, uh, not really, not yet. Oh, there we go. Maybe getting some lift here. Just, uh, gonna just try to milk it. Yeah, I don't need to, th I don't need to circle. Only got 20 miles to go. Altitude 14,900 feet. Do kind of try to clear this, uh, this ridge here. You can see there's a tall mountain on my right. So our goal is the uh, Air Force Academy's airfield, airport. Just kind of north of Colorado Springs, or north end of Colorado Springs. Oh yeah, strong lift under here. So I could, I could turn in this, I could circle and climb a lot, but uh, I don't need to. I'm just gonna. I'm just pulling the stick back. Now I'm getting really slow. 53 knots. So I'm climbing like crazy, just flying in a straight line. 800 feet a minute, 700 feet a minute. This is kind of just all free lift here. It's like a little porpoise, and then. Uh, as we leave the cloud in the lift, the thermal will speed back up. A little bit faster than best glide speed because we have plenty of altitude. 15,800 feet and 18 nautical miles to go. All right, let's set the nose down and we'll speed up here at 62 knots. We'll fly about 70 for another couple of minutes just to make sure we get, just to make sure we have plenty of altitude to clear this ridge. I don't know if you can tell, but this ridge, like, yeah, you can see it drops off right here, right? So we have to clear this, and then it drops off into, like, the lower altitude. And it says the goal there is 6,500 feet, which sounds crazy high. I mean, Denver's, like, 5,000 or something, right? A mile-high city, right? So, that would mean, this is, like, another 1,000 feet higher than, no, well, maybe. I don't know. We took off from Telluride, which is at uh, 9,000. So everything in Colorado is high elevation.
But uh, yeah, now we're uh, we're doing good. We are kicking butt. So I'm gonna fly and tag the Air Force Academy straight ahead, 15.7 nautical miles. I'm gonna make a right turn and fly up the fly south along the ridge a little bit, depending on how much altitude I have when I get there. And I'm gonna look for a spot called the Garden of the Gods. It's like a state park or kind of national park. I don't know. Probably not a national park. You'd probably know if it if it was a national park, but. It's like a it's like a nice like natural area with like some really interesting rock formations. It's super popular for the rock climbers, and you know there's like hiking and camping and stuff out there. So I'm curious to see what it looks like in the sim. I've been there IRL, and uh, it's fun to uh, you know check out the sites in the sim, and see what they look like, see how well they're how well they're rendered. And even just to like, you know, see if I can actually spot it, because I don't know exactly where it is. But I think it should be pretty distinctive. It's, you know, these mountains are all green, and, and it's like it's like a bunch of the like red or like sandstone. Like, you know, I, I don't know my, I don't know my, I don't know my, oh my geology. Is that the right term? Geology? I don't even know the right term. I think that's it. Because I have a friend who's a geologist, and like another friend was talking about him, but they, he couldn't think of the word either, and he called him a gynecologist. <laughs> and so that was kind of a running, a running joke, you know. It's like, oh yeah, there's Zach, the gynecologist. Colorado is beautiful. Look at these lakes up here. What's going on up there, you think? I don't see any roads going there. Oh, maybe there is. I bet there's like epic like fishing up there or something. See the highway running uh, running through the area here. Colorado Springs. Eleven point one eight, eleven point zero six nautical miles to the Air Force Academy, flying in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Flight time is uh, right around uh, maybe a little less than three hours. It was tough go uh, going uh, to get started. Let's bring up the map here in case uh, anybody's just tuning in or you forgot maybe what our task today was. We took off uh, down here in Telluride, a little town in Telluride, epic area. And then we went down into this little spot and then pretty much did that just to check out the mountains in the area. And then across to here and then up to Aspen. You know, had to go check out Aspen in the sim. And now we're uh, on a long glide over to uh, Colorado Springs. Total of 215 nautical miles. And we are almost wrapping it up. Thanks for stopping by and watching uh, the stream, hanging out with me this uh, Sunday evening. It's evening here in uh, California time. Cool looking lake down there. We're flying the LS8 glider released with the uh, recent update. And I'm flying with a custom weather mod. Sorry, not a custom weather mod, just custom weather that I set up specifically for good uh, thermaling, thermal soaring conditions. If you're curious on how I did that, and kind of the decision-making process on that, I have a video on my YouTube channel, a clip from one of my streams uh, last week. Link to that is down below on the Twitch page, or if you're watching on my YouTube channel, you can find it on my YouTube channel. A little cloud here that we're coming up underneath. That looks cool. 
Looks like there's some uh, lift right under it also. A little bit. Altitude 14,800 feet. Hardly lost any altitude on uh, on that glide. And uh, yeah, just six miles from our goal at the Air Force Academy. Oh yeah, there's that uh, like world famous Air Force Academy Cathedral down there. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that looks like it uh, rendered nicely. How neat is that? Looks like school must be in today because uh, a lot of cars in the parking lot. Colorado Springs, here we are, guys. We made it. Another epic uh, flight. I mean, we still got to land safely. So far, I've been able to land them all. And uh, a ridiculous amount of altitude. I still have uh, yeah, 8,000 AGL here. And uh, yeah, look at the mountains here. Colorado Springs, not bad. Not bad. Going through this cloud, see if we get a little bit of lift. Oh, yeah, we're... Oh, there's some strong lift under this cloud. Don't even need to touch the controls. Just watch it go up. 15,000 feet of this. Easy peasy. All right, so... I want to find this spot called the Garden of the Gods. And I'm pretty sure it's south of here. I'm gonna fly right over Gold Field first. Because that's kind of what you do. And I think, uh. Yeah, that's like the main interstate right there. Can't remember which one it is. Air Force Academy down below. Oh, that's a cool, cool shot. Post those on Reddit. That'll give me some upvotes for sure. Farts in stream. What's up, Stank Breath? Thanks for joining. Or just, uh, yeah, there's like, uh, for the guys that are like affiliates, you know, there's like, uh, you know, more interactions. You know, you can sort of like earn credits and like buy. I don't know if you've seen other channels that have that. So you could have like a fart button, so. You know, maybe we'll set that up. There we go. There's the Air Force Academy, guys. We made it. That's the goal. Colorado Springs. Look at that. What a beautiful part of the country. All right. Let's go try to find... Since we got uh, so much altitude here. Channel points. 1K redeem equals fart on stream. I think I'd have to have like a fart machine for that because I definitely can't fart on demand. I mean, like if I tried to fart right now, I would definitely shit. And uh, no amount of channel points is worth uh, me shitting myself. Because, uh, well then I'd have to pause and, and then, you know, change my uh, pants. And, uh, you know, that's not entertaining. All right, so there's a park called the Garden of the Gods around here somewhere. That's not it. That's the Garden of the of the uh, Quarry. Think of how viral you'd go, though. Flight sim streamer shits himself mid-flight. 
Yeah, we get a lot of upvotes. We get a lot of upvotes. Right, where is this place? Well, it's not there because there's houses there. It's like somewhere in the foothills over here. Oh, oh, this is it right here. Oh, yeah, 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 all this red stuff, that's right, yeah, 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 it's just like redstone, I don't know, whatever you call that. Or my, uh, geology, uh, followers, what do you call this, like, red rocks? It looks all jaggedly, though, though, so it's kind of disappointedly rendered in the sim. You know, these are, like... Looks like maybe a couple new people uh, uh, watching the stream right now. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Appreciate it. We're flying gliders in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator today. That's pretty much, well, that's all I do in the sim now. <laughs> and that's kind of all I'm interested in. Look at this airplane. What a beautiful airplane. Got the Xbox uh, livery on there. Supporting our console, brothers, you know. Uh, of course, you know, I'm a PC master race kind of guy, but... Uh, uh, you know, uh, gotta appreciate the consoles, and I think it's super cool that, uh, they've got the flight sim on the console. Hey, Rico, glad to see you again. Where in the world are you? We're in Colorado Springs. Just wrapping up this flight. Let me show you what we did today. This was a cool flight. I, 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 I screwed up. I did not take your advice. I didn't have time to properly research your suggestion for the Brazil flight, so that'll be coming up. We will hit Brazil for sure. Here's what we did today, guys. Today's task, a 215 mile sort of dog leg uh, uh, task. Started down here in the legendary town of Telluride. And then uh, flew up to uh, Aspen. Had to check out Aspen. Got a little place in Aspen, you know. And then uh, out here at Colorado Springs. We're gonna go land at the Air Force Academy. And uh, of course I got here with uh, a ton of altitude. So right now I'm just flying over this area called these red rocks. This is an area called the Garden of the Gods. I wanted to check out and see how it's rendered. And uh, yeah, kind of disappointing. It's all jaggedy, so not a very good. Yeah, there's like these like vertical walls, and so the rock climbers like to uh, you know go there. Good rock climbing, I guess. Uh, uh, but it's a super cool area. Spent some time there when my brother lived in. Uh, Colorado Springs, and it's, yeah, it's all this red rock, whatever you call it, red clay rock or something, I don't, I don't know my, my, uh, geology, but, uh, but yeah, we're, uh, we did an, another epic cross-country flight, flying gliders in the sim is, just continues to be a lot of fun for me, and we're wrapping this one up, flight time, uh, somewhere around three hours today. Kind of had some trouble getting going, getting established. But, um, yeah, once we got up and got on course finally, then it was, uh, yeah, then it was no thing. So now we've got some altitude to play with. So let's play. Scott by Scott. There it is. Colorado Springs. You going to retire there? Scott by Scott's family lives here in the springs. Get a little bit of airspeed. And then we'll bring the nose up. There's a little barrel roll for you. Retire in Vegas. Are we getting two low passes to the today? I don't know. <laughs> Retirement in Vegas is a great way to have to work again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna spend your retirement in Vegas in a weekend. <laughs> uh. Yeah, no doubt. 
No doubt. Colorado Springs, check it out there, uh, Scott. Look at this. Tell us where your parents' house is. We'll go. Uh, we'll go uh, do a flyby. Yeah, I don't know about the, um, yeah, the double beat up landing. Yeah, I, you know, I'm flying a different airplane. I'm flying the LS-8 today. That's my excuse, because I'm not used to this airplane. Uh, so, um, and I also don't know the wind direction. Um, I don't, because I don't know how to set this flight computer up right. This thing is, it's wonky. I, you know, I, I, I normally fly that, uh, uh, I normally fly that, uh, the, uh, discus, but, uh, for some reason, the flight computer was, like, not turning on. The flight computer inside the computer, right, the virtual flight computer was not working. So, you have wheels, wind doesn't matter. Well, I mean, yeah, you're, well, I guess, you know, you want to do the first one downwind, right? But I guess if you're going to do two, then it kind of doesn't matter. So, yeah, you're right. You land with a tailwind. Plus, it's a sim, right? Who cares? I mean, I am over here at the Air Force Academy, so I gotta, I gotta show these guys how it's done, right? Just one wheel. I only have one wheel. This uh, flight yoke has a, you know, mechanical switch for the, uh, for the. Um, you know, for the landing gear. And it has a really satisfying, nice, thick click. Did you guys, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not on the mic. Oh yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> double whoosh was the first thing he tried. He goes right for the double whoosh. I gotta build up to it, all right? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, after a few loops, of course, of course. Where are we at here? 11,000 feet, so we've got a, we've got a few thousand to play with here. we got about 5,000 feet to play with. And we got a whole bunch of different runways to play with there at the Air Force Academy, too. Oh, they got a grass runway there. Let's land on the grass, you guys. I <laughs> just... Point one below v &E. that's how I like to do it. That was awkward. Second pass upside down. I did see online somebody did that. They did like they did like the uh, I think they only did one pass, but they went inverted like through a hangar and then climbed out. level loop. Oh, I'm getting some frame rate issues there. Oh. 
The Air Force Academy takes some rendering horsepower. Oh man, that's running. Running like balls. You guys want a low pass or do you want a buzz of the tower? Quick, let me know. Do you want to go Top Gun style and buzz the tower? Or do you want the low pass? Oh, look at the football stadium over here. Oh, we should buzz the football stadium and then go land. Go right through the field goals. No, we're not going to do that. Low pass. All right, he votes for the low pass. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I'm going to say it. I hate Top Gun. I think that movie is trash. I just lost all my followers right there. <laughs> all the girls asking for a double low pass. I doubt there is a single girl watching the stream right now. What movie? Uh, Freddy Got Fingered. That's my least favorite movie ever. Right, Clark? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Uh. What's up, Air Force Academy? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? That was a low pass right there, dudes. That's one. That's all we're getting today. You're going to have to stay tuned, bro. Landing gear down. That was, a lot, that was a lot better than my previous low passes. Get some spoilers up. Always overshoot it. That's right. This one is super narrow. Full spoilers. Woo! Coming in hot. Slower down, slower down. Woo! And ground loop, dude. Ah, oh, I broke it. Oh, come on. Uh, uh. Well. Classic ground loop. Yeah, I have trouble keeping her straight there when we get, uh, get on the runway. Landing the gliders is a little tricky. In any case, well, uh, yeah, that does it, uh, yeah, GG, second place. <laughs> oh. What, what's it? oh, well, in any case, we had a great flight though. Uh, just to remind you guys what we did today. Uh, yeah, flew from flew in Colorado. Here's the task: 215 nautical miles from Telluride to Colorado Springs, and then I screwed up the landing. And um, yeah, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty epic. I, I, I had fun on that flight. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, of course, it looks like I get the most probably get the most viewers right when I'm like wrapping up the stream, right? So, um, but if you guys uh, if you guys will, let's um, hang out with me and let's uh, let's do a raid. Let's do a raid on Planet Neutral. This guy raided me the other day. So, uh, I'm gonna, let's raid back, and uh, this will be fun. So, let's go stream manager raid. Pick a channel, oh, there he is, all right. 
All right, we're going to start the raid. All right, thanks for uh, joining me, guys. You're going to go check out Planet Neutral. He's a good guy, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch you. It might be on tomorrow. We'll see. I don't know. I'll try to do the schedule. You know, we'll see you around. Thanks a lot. What's up, legend? Thank you for the raid. Gets me right back. <laughs> That's quality. That's quality. Welcome in, friend. New friend designed by Dave. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Ignore the horrendous aviation you were just witnessing right there. <laughs> we're just getting off the ground. Oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it, Eric. Hope you're well. They've had things wrap up in Colorado. Uh, Butt Monster, appreciate the follow. Thank you so much. So anyway, we just got off the ground up in West Kootenay, Castlegar. And we're on the Columbia River. Heat Heat, Sparky, Sasquain. Chasing me down like they usually have to. Oh no, Grand, Grand Loop on landing. Yikes. <laughs> See, I'm in the Kit Fox right now. I'm gonna get down on the water for a little bit here, get close. And then I think later on, 